Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Furry Carrick Park for today's Neil O'Sullivan Cup final between All Blacks FC and Shelburne United. I'm Adam Doyle, and I kindly joined on commentary today by Nicky Murphy. How are you, Nicky? I'm good, Adam, and yourself? Not too bad at all, Nicky. Thankfully, it's dried up here at Furry Carrick Park. There was rain when we got here, but it's perfect conditions for a game. Yeah, uh, perfect conditions. No wind. The ball should be um, zipping around the ground, so really looking forward to it. That's it, isn't it? A little, bit, a little bit of moisture on the grass always makes the game that little bit better, I suppose, doesn't it? Definitely makes a big difference. But we get straight into the teams. Nicky, we'll have a quick look now in a second. We're just going to watch the teams as they come out onto the pitch. Um, both two good, strong teams, Nicky. Yeah, two two strong teams. Uh, Shelburne have been tapping around the bottom of the, the two division, Division 2 and Division 3 the last couple of years there. They've had a couple of promotions and... All Blacks um, they haven't really come out of nowhere, but they've signed a lot of lads back from Kilmore, yeah. Rosslare Rangers. A lot yeah. of these guys would have played in the in the Premier League over the last few years. So yeah, All Blacks, exactly they look a little bit yeah, stronger sure. on paper. And and I suppose Shelbur Shelburne, then obviously their their season end over after today. They have a playoff during the week for promotion out of their division as well. So they yeah. have a lot to play for. Um, yeah, they to have to have they ran Ajax um, and Dennis Scott United to the wire this year yeah. in um, Division um, Two. So. Division, yeah. Um, they're looking to get promoted. All Blacks are a division behind them, but um, yeah. they, they they came up and they've had a great year. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll have a quick look at the teams, Nicky. Yeah. So the starting team for Shelburne United: number one, Luke Connor; number two, Shane Cullen; number three, Kevin Collins; number four, Patrick Barron; number five, Podrick Lynch; number six, Brian Lynch; number seven, Owen Kelly; number eight, James O'Rourke; number nine, Owen Burke; number ten, Barry Kelly; and number eleven, Dara Bulger. And they're coached by Paul Lynch. And the All Blacks team then, number one, Owen Cummins, number two, Connor Breen, number three, Dot Moore, number four, Peter Goldsmith, number five, Gary Moore, number six, Darren Naughton, number seven, Shane Goff, number eight, Kyle Rankin, number nine, Shane Cassidy, number ten, Adam Debricks, and number eleven, Adam Golf, and their coach is Alan Goldsmith. And the substitutions for both teams on the bench for Shelburne, we've Jess Quigley, Sean Moore, and Patrick Boland, Connor Ding, and on the bench for All Blacks, Niall Moore, Craig Carroll, Brad Coolhoff. Greg Tony, Paul Murphy, and John Maguire, and Mark Doyle. I suppose, Nicky, the first thing you'd see there looks like Paul Murphy, I know, had picked up a niggle, doesn't seem fit enough to start at the moment. He's not named in their st initial start in 11 anyway. No, he's, he's not named, and he'll be a big miss. The yeah. experience of Paul, he's played at the highest, highest level. Yeah. Um, he played in England, he's represented Ireland, so to lose a player that, even though he's at the, the latter end of his career, to lose yeah. a player like that on a cup final day is a massive... Um, I do, I do see he, he is togged out on Nicky, so I suppose, and he is named on the bench. So if if they do need what a player to be able to bring off the bench and make an impact, if he can, if he can get twenty minutes even. Look at Goggy done it for a few years with North End. Yeah. He used to whip Paul off yeah. and yeah. and put the ball up because you know he's not going to give it away. No. And they had great success in the in the Premier League and in yeah. Leicester Juniors and FAIs. Yeah. Um, and he's back now with his, uh, yeah, where he started, exactly so started, um, yeah. I'm sure he'd love to get on today at some stage. Exactly, no, it'll be it'll be a good game, and it looks like all, all Blacks are going to line up, I think they've been playing 3-5-2 most of the year, where the Shelburne's are to go with the 4-4-2, four, four, um, so it'll be funny to see what way the formations will pan out, um, and see if they'll have to make any changes quickly, but we're in we're in for a, g a good game here, and I suppose you look at the likes of All Blacks to be looking to get Darren Norton and Kyle Rankin in the middle of midfield on that ball as much as they can, I watched them play against the Bows last week um, in their game to score their league title and I tell you the two boys were absolutely superb in the middle of midfield yeah look at um, you go through Peter Smith or Peter Goldsmith there as well um, that, that's a very very strong central midfield trio yeah. um, Kyle Rankin I'm looking forward to seeing Kyle with Sean McGrovers who were in the cup final yesterday yeah. in the youths um, so he, he went back down to All Blacks this year so um, yeah looking forward to it the two goffs loads of experience as well on that All Blacks team and then look, looking at the Shelburne team, look at Dara Bulger and Owen Burke have been scoring goals for fun at times during the season. So they're going to be the danger men up top there for Shelburne. The lads in the back line, the back three of All Blacks will have to be, I suppose, they'll be looking for those two wingers really to get back and make them a back five when they, when they lose the ball. And we chatted here last week with the Billy Brown Cup final. You don't see many teams in the lower divisions play that 3-5-2 because it is, it's tough work for the wingers when you're a wing back and you can't just stay forward. You really have to do a good oh, job. It's Well, it's a specialised formation, isn't it? Yeah, you it know, is, So it, it really is. Um, so it'll be interesting to see do the line up like that today on a big pitch. The other thing what I'm actually looking forward to today, uh, last week's cup final, the two teams knew each other, so it took a yeah. while for that game to get going. Right. Yesterday, the youth team had, it was their fourth time playing this year, so yeah. that so I, as far as I know, this is the first time these, is, yeah, these two teams have played each other season, this year. Yeah. So there might be a few surprises. It might be it might kick well, off a little it, bit yeah, quicker. Exactly, they could. It It'll take it'll take a little bit of time just to feel each other out. I'm sure, but yeah. Um, and a referee today is Darren Ennis. 
Um, so Darren is in the middle for today's game. Looks like we're just going to have the toss at the moment there and see what way we're going to be playing. There is, there's a bit of a wind picking up, but it seems to be going straight down the pitch. So both teams will get the advantage of it at some stage. But yeah, we'll be, um, as you said, a little bit of moisture there on the grass will do the pitch the world of good. Oh, yeah. Fre look, the pitch is freshly cut. It's a lovely surface here for Carrick. There'll be no complaints today, Nicky, that the pitch wasn't in, in good nick anyway. They can't blame the pitch if, the, if their touch is bad today. No, Jesus, no. The pitch looks in fantastic order, and it has been the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, we've been down there, down here fairly regular the last few weeks. So, um, yeah, no, look, pitch is in tip-top order. It's a great facility down here yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, in fairness, Nicky, great, great crowd in here at Furry Carrick this morning as well. It's great to see, isn't it? Yeah. Two, two local teams, I suppose, always have a good, always have a good support. Uh, yeah, that's it. And they're yeah. two well-supported clubs, especially yeah. All Blacks. And the two of them have had a great year so far in their own leagues. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. So yeah, the, the the cherry on top of the cake. If either, whichever one lifts the cup, it will be Shelburne United get it underway, shooting from right to left in the green and yellow jerseys, and obviously the All Blacks then from left to right in your black and white. Be, you see a lot in cup finals, Nicky, sometimes it's the team that can sort of settle the quickest and get into their football and sort of that first goal in cup finals is so vital, isn't it? I know it never wins you the game, but it can give you such a boost. And you seen it last week, the Billy Brown Cup final, when, when Bree were able to get that equaliser, sort of the second one, and it just gave him such a lift. So, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It'll be. I you know. know. I'm sure, look, nerves play a massive part. These lads That's have been waiting all week yeah, for this game. Exactly, like, yeah. and, and no matter what it is, whether it's the Wexford Football League Cup or whether it's the Neil O'Sullivan, you're it. nervous. You're yeah. going to be nervous. Cup final is a cup final. You Show don't get to play too many of them. No, the no, that's exactly We are underway it. straight away and Shelburne looking to get down the right-hand side straight away and get the game on and see if they can create their first attacking opportunity. Oh, Blacks. Will be a throw over on the far side. I'm getting myself mixed up with the colours there and used to seeing the all blacks and the black, but it's normally black and red Nicky they use, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. Mm. We're so alternate alternate kit of green and yellow to that. Yeah. Nice kit too. Nice kit. Kinda yeah. like the old Man United one of the a few old years Man ago. One of years ago, yeah. I mean just about old enough to remember that Nicky. Yeah, myself too. <laughs> Adam, myself too. So straight away it is the All Blacks looking to go through the middle. Long ball up. Well contested by number five there, Gary Moore for or not Gary Moore, sorry, it was number five, Padraig Lynch. Um, done really well, but it's not gone yet, and there is some danger now. The All Blacks building down the right hand side. Just to get the cross in. Ball does come into the feet of the attacker. But again, it is that number five for Shelburne Podrick Lynch with another good tackle, and he'll be quite happy to get a couple of touches at the start of the game and build a little bit of confidence. And that's what the teams will look to do now. Look, try to get the ball down on the deck and just try to play a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I look, they're only feeling themselves out now yeah. for the next couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, to be a little bit of a few jabs thrown, shall we say, to see what that's happens. It, yeah. and, 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 and I suppose, uh, and I suppose not. There's there's not too many pitches of this sort of size in the in the league, and that's going to be another thing when it comes down to it. You know what I mean? It's it's a hot day here, and it's not necessarily really sunny, but it's very it's very sticky and humid, and it's definitely going to be a test of their fitness levels too on a big pitch. There's oh yeah. Formation wise, I suppose you're maybe used to playing there, maybe at a, a local pitch was never this uh, this size. So no, yeah. and all of them are our key factors. Oh, oh, slip in the middle, chance here for the All Blacks. Comes out, gets the strike away. And that was unlucky. I think that was um, the, the left back, the left, the left wing back. I think was it Aaron Goff. Yeah, Aaron got in there. A little bit of a mistake by the centre half there for Shelburne, but um, they never uh, capitalised on it. Good header there by Connor Breen just to get it away. And I'm just looking out there, I think a couple of, couple of the All Blacks lads are wearing different numbers on the back of their jerseys to what we've been given. So we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to deal with that. I know. We'll <laughs> We'll pick him up as we go along, but it is a free kick here to the All Blacks. Good ball into the middle, opportunity to turn out. Yeah, the, the, the two um, clubs that are going GA style, yeah. they're not going by um, the, the match that we are, the, the cards that we were given anyway. No, they're going by, yeah, they're going by the, way the, 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 the way the pitch plays. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pick it up as an opportunity now. All Blacks settling well here now, ball into the feet. Nick does make it stick. Happy just to knock it around and All Blacks doing well at the moment just to hold on to possession and try to create some chances. It's a lovely ball into the edge of the box, plays it back out wide. Unfortunately, the cross doesn't come off. That's some nice footballs early on from All Blacks to look. So we're trying to sort of stamp their control on the game yeah, from the start. They're moving the ball quite nice. Shane Cassidy up front there looks yeah. very lively. The ball is stuck to him twice there when it's played into his feet. So um and you'd expect that with the three in the centre midfield um for All Blacks with um Kyle uh, Darren Octon and um Peter, yeah. you know they're they're all good, very good footballers. Yeah, it's a 
I suppose it, when you play that three five two, when you can afford then to have one of your sort of your middle three sit sort of in the six and sweep across your back, that yeah. three gives them plenty. But an opportunity now for Shelburne to get down the left hand side, two in the box. If he can get his head up, that is a good cross, but it's just going to go too far. But an opportunity there for for Shelburne to get down the left hand side, but unfortunately just couldn't get the, the quality to cross on it that he wanted. But just goes to prove that it's well, going to be dangerous too. With that, with the three five two system, it does create spaces behind the wing back, yeah, and exactly. uh, that's where all uh, Shelburne will look to exploit. And that was the first time to put one in over that today. Yeah. Straight away there, the All Blacks were looking to play out from the back. The ball out didn't exactly come out, and an opportunity you now for Shelburne to build again. But well broke up in the middle of midfield, but danger not gone. Shelburne centre half coming out stronger and wins his team free kick and be the first opportunity now to get a ball in the box. Yes, yeah. could see like the game, the games last week there where it was opportunities there sort of a lot of goals came from free kicks and crosses so yeah set pieces they play massive in the junior league um, it's um, not the easiest to um, uh, to defend um, and organise especially if you have a very good set piece delivery long ball in towards the back post headed back across dangerous hair good header down oh and there's oh, the first goal the first goal of the game what a start for Shelburne what a start so great dangerous ball in Nicky to the back post so and we'll, uh, we'll get a quick look at the replay of that, Nicky. Yeah. So that was a great ball into the back post. Looked like it was headed down and the keeper made a good save initially. Yeah, a good save and Owen Kelly looked like he was the quickest to react. As we said, set great piece delivery. in. Delivery deep. I think it came off, oh, came came off, off the defender. defender. Yeah, yeah. I think it went as far as the keeper. I think the keeper might have thought he was had it, but it is Shelburne straight away into a one-goal lead and they couldn't have asked for a better start. A fantastic early start. Um, and a fantastic um, reaction there from Owen Kelly that's when the ball dropped that's in the box. That's what you need, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you did, yeah. So, all blacks will be disappointed. That's exactly what you need, but... It was a great header back across. Was, I don't know it, yeah. who got it on it, but it was a fantastic header back across that, that time. That's all you need sometimes, yeah, I guess. And all blacks someone just to get a head on that, and but straight away down the other end, oh. opportunity, ball for oh. the ball. An opportunity there, I think it was Darren Norton coming in on that one. Yeah. An opportunity to bounce absolutely straight back, but... Yeah, um, one of the Goff twins broke there down the right hand side and, and pulled it back and you would expect Darren after uh, landing late in the yeah. in the penalty area. T time does run very well in yeah. fairness Tom. So uh, he I'm sure he'll be disappointed with that. Yeah, but an opportunity straight away for the All Blacks to bounce back and if if the if the game continues to go like this, Nicky, the way we've had a, a lightning start here, we're only six minutes in now and opportunities for both we could be in for an absolute cracker of a game here. Well that's yeah, I'd agree. We just said it before the game started last week, and we and yesterday teams cancelled each other out, so yeah. these two didn't really know what was yeah. going to happen. So there's only, there's only so much homework you can do, I guess. Yes, yeah. that's All it. All Blacks again, a good ball in there. In fairness, All Blacks, they are trying to play some football, aren't they? To they are create indeed, nice yeah. little triangles. Yeah, I watched All Blacks play in the league last week, and they did play beautiful football times against uh, Wexford Bowes. Didn't necessarily have a great game in the first half, but to come out in the second half and absolutely rip the balls asunder to win the league. So 6-4. Six, 6-4. Four. Six, four so it was a belter of a game, a game. so hopefully of a game. we'll have something like that yeah. now. We can have a 6-4 game here, Nicky. It'll make our <laughs> job all the more easier. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> it surely will. <laughs> but no, look, we could show up. <laughs> Shelburne will be absolutely delighted with that start, and there's nothing better, Nicky. You sort of soak up a couple of first minutes of pressure, and then your first real proper attack to hit him. Yeah, um, no, no. Um, it's a fantastic, um, fantastic an start. An from early goal will settle Shelburne down and it'll, it'll force the All Blacks into having to go for it even more than they already were now because they're, they're going to have to score at least one more. Well, yeah. Opportunity now. All Blacks down the left hand side. Another good opportunity now. Gets his head up. It's a great cross in towards the front post. Keeper does well and gets two fists on it. Danger not quite gone yet. Ball is still there. Roll back into the middle. Gets the strike away. Oh, oh it comes off the upright. That's a lovely bit of play. The two Goffs are fantastic footballers yeah. and. And uh, Trevor or Kyle, Trevor's Kyle's father, uh, yeah. Kyle hit the hit the, hit the post right, there, yeah. and he's a very talented um, yeah, soccer player. Um, that's a couple of times Kyle, now he's so. got on, he's got on the ball there. And Peter is now starting to. Yes. Peter Small Gosby is getting on top of the ball is, a, a little bit now, so they'll be, they'll be looking for him to. The only. Perfect. Opportunity now for Shelburne to try to get out of half, but that just goes to prove the, the opportunities there. If they, if they can get Kyle Rankin on the ball at the edge of the box, he has the, the quality there to deliver shots like that, and that one only inches away from finding the equaliser. 
yeah, and it has been as good a goal as you'd see anywhere. That's so true. exactly, mm-hmm. but uh, as you said a couple of times, now Kyle's got on the ball like that and created a bit of danger. So we're looking to get it to him, but not Shelburne to g- trying to get out now. But again, that act line there, the All Blacks stand strong. But one back by Shelburne, I think that would be a free kick as well. Yeah, just a little bit of a, a bit of a nick at an arm as he was going by. Yeah, yeah, I think All Blacks were looking for a free first, but Darren had no interest in giving it. So. No. He pulled them back there. It'll be an opportunity now again for Shelburne to get that long ball into the long ball into the box, and the look, it was dangerous the last time. And he's their, their big number, their big number seven there, as you said, Owen Kelly, who was the, got on the end of the last one. Yeah, and so um, both teams are quite quite physical, quite yeah. big, like so, and that's another, another good delivery. Oh. oh, and the keeper just forced the keeper let it chose to let it hop, and it hopped up high, and the keeper was forced just to push it over the bar. But a good safe hand from Owen Cummins just to push it up over the bar, but it does give Shelburne an opportunity, and that was another really good delivery, Nicky. Well, it just goes to show the grease on the ground made yeah. that ball zip off of yeah. it, and and Owen had to react. Um, Owen probably managed that it would have hopped lower, maybe with it yeah. being greasy, you know so what I mean? But uh, uh, the surface is it's it's wet on top, but it's very dry underneath, and yes. it's still hard and compact. So a corner here now for Shelburne. Great delivery in towards that back post to where the big lads are again. Oh. Keeper comes and I think he could just got a hand on it and it is gonna be another it is gonna be another corner, but Shelburne do look very dangerous from set pieces. Yeah. Their de- de- their delivery has been excellent. Uh, they've really whipped them in and they're they're attacking every ball they can. Yeah, and I suppose any win that is there. Not not nothing better, I suppose, than you having that wind in that'll help you hook it in, but another corner does come in there. And that'll be a throw. As, as I said, that wind is there, Nicky, and it's going to howl those free kicks right in on top of the keeper. So the keeper is going to be under pressure, but he's done well so far. Oh, yeah, definitely. And they should use it for every yeah, advantage because exactly, um, yeah. they won't have it in the second half. So they should definitely try and it pen- uh, benefited the first one they delivered definitely, in. Yeah. Opportunity now, Shelburne down the right hand side from the throw. And that one has gone for uh, the All Blacks. I thought they were getting the throw there, but the linesman chose to go the other way, so it's still going to be a throw to Shelburne. And Shelburne starting to put a little bit more pressure on now and getting some, some nice. Um, Possession, throw in, knocks it back, and again the All Blacks lads are out to close it down quick. Another throw for Shelburne, to be taken by Shane Cullen. Into the feet, kind of make it stick this time again. The All Blacks get out in front and do really well. Doesn't get it cleared all the way. Shelburne still here with the opportunity, looking to find a way down the right hand side, but. That one is going to go out for a goal kick off the corner flag and the All Blacks will be happy to have a chance just to settle things down. Yeah, try settle and try build now as they go along. Um, try get a little bit of football going. Yeah, and think look, they shouldn't panic. They've, ah, look, they've still 80 time, minutes and time, yeah. if, they, if they stay to their game plan, just take their time and, and keep yeah. trying to believe in what they're trying to, what they were trying to do. That's one thing the All so. Blacks don't panic. But I can see, you can see the difference in the two teams. Shelburne seem to be a very direct team. They're looking to get that ball quick forward. Whereas yep. the All Blacks look, they're trying to get the ball on and play, maybe play a little bit more football on the deck. And be, it'd be, it's, yep. it's good to see sometimes when you get two teams that are in difference. But opportunity here. Oh, oh but that's a great, a great tackle there by number four, Patrick Barron for Shelburne. Just to, to tidy that one up there as the striker looked to nick in. Yeah, it, uh, um, it looked like um, Shane Cassidy was going to nip in that time but as you said whenever All Blacks do get the ball down they are actually playing nice football and they, they are trying to open them up. Lovely ball by Kyle Rankin out to this left hand side Aaron Goff cuts inside Ooh. looking for a free there but I think the, Black, or the Shelburne man just done well just to cut off the run in fairness there was nothing, nothing malicious in it. No. And again, just looking at it here Nicky there's times there when the All Blacks are going forward even though they're playing three at the back they're not afraid just to leave themselves with two back there. Oh no look yeah. there's two now with Peter just ah, sitting in front lovely, lovely play there. Lovely football ball across is the finish there? The finish yeah. is there! The finish is there a fairly immediate response I think yeah. that was Shane Cassidy with the goal. Shane Nicky, Cassidy it? but he if a lo- on that one. lovely bit of play and Shane has looked like the sharpest player um, at the start of this game, um, but it, in fairness, Aaron Goff is playing really well here. Yeah. Lovely football. Look at that, lovely one two. That the start of Kyle Rankin's delivery out, and look at that, an absolutely super ball into the danger area. Came off the defender, off the keeper, and in fairness to Shane Cassidy, he was there to do exactly what he's been put in there for, and that's yeah. the map to you know what I mean to be that poacher in the box. That's a couple of times though that the All Blacks got down the outside and put them dangerous yeah. balls in. As you said, the two Goff brothers, absolutely superb. Superb. Um, and any chance that Aaron's got to put a ball in the box there, and so far he's, it's been it's been on the money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, de- definitely. I, I know the two Goffs. My father would have managed them yeah. when they were only 10 and 11, 12. He had them in the Kennedy Cup. So I know the, the lads a long, long time. Yeah. And uh, they have loads of experience, but they're very, very good footballers. Yeah, well, if they keep putting in deliveries like that, they'll lure team the world of good. But so look straight away there and looking to get out oh. wide again. But just a little, little bit sloppy there from, from the centre half. And 
But a great game so far. We're one all here now in the it's wide it's open it and it's great to see isn't it it's a and it's two look, teams going Nicky, for you made a, a very valid point there are two teams that don't know each other sometimes can be the best game of soccer you know what I mean yeah. you don't know who the best player well you'll, look, you'll know who their best players are in the game but when you're not playing them during the season you haven't got a chance to, to, see, to see what they're really about yeah that's it and you can look at it as many games as you want you, yeah. you only really find out when you actually line up against them and see how your formation sets exactly, up yes. against yeah. theirs that's a good strong tackle Garrett Larkin is after giving a free there, the, the linesman, for for something. I didn't see it. It no, looks a handball. I think he's yeah, after I calling think that's for. that's what he said, that the ball so was, was controlled with the hand. So, a good opportunity here now. Yeah. And 30 yards out, so a good opportunity to maybe either either work, the, either work the keeper or maybe another dangerous delivery in maybe around the back post. Yeah, it's at an angle there. Um, he's not too far out, maybe 25 yards out so it's probably just it's on the border isn't it I suppose you don't know with the, with the little bit of wind behind him knowing if he can so maybe with that sort of well it looks like he's going to whip it in yeah, now it with the right yeah. foot maybe if it was a lefty they'd yeah. have um, they'd have went for it he could slide it here now yeah. because an opportunity um, outside yeah. Patrick Byron is going to take it but he does have the number 11 Darryl Darryl Bulger Bulger. just lining up outside him waiting for the slip maybe but no. dangerous ball in towards the front not gone yet and it is it is that number 11 that managed yeah, to get in there. He snuck in around the back, but he, he was snuffed out by Kyle Rankin that time. Yeah. The all backs looking to break. That's a beautiful ball around the corner, but really, really well done there by Shane Cullen just to cut it out. But danger not gone. Ball through as far. Aaron Goff on the left hand side whips the ball in, goes all the way across to the other side to his brother Shane. He just couldn't manage to keep that in, but both teams dangerous on the break, Nicky, ain't it? Yeah, definitely. I've been really, really impressed with Aaron Goff and Shane Cassidy on this yeah, side. Yeah. They've played one or two lovely one touches, and they're they're yeah. using the space of Ferry Carrig. They're uh, really impressive. Yeah, to yeah, open into the game. That's it, Jen. And in fairness, to Kyle Rankin now starting to grow more and more into the game as well. He he was snuffed that one out there and straight away. Seen him putting in the effort to get up the pitch and support his team. So yeah. Been a great game so far, and but Kyle, Kyle, and Darren Nocton are both all action yeah. players. Yeah, Kyle sure. has the legs; he's only 17, maybe yeah. 18. He yeah. should, he'll get around the pitch exactly. all day yeah. long. That's what you're looking for, I suppose. When you when you mix up, I suppose. And look, don't get me wrong; I know Dar Darren Nocton. I'm not saying Darren Nocton is anyway old, but when you <laughs> when you can have a young 17 or 18 year old beside you, it definitely makes your job a little bit easier, don't you? You can start to when you get tired, maybe you can say to him, "Look, go go ahead there and work work away." Kyle probably makes Darren look old. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you go inside any 17-year-olds, 17, 17 you're going to look, you're going to look, but look, it's, it, it's great to see the younger lads, you know, coming in, and it's exactly what any team needs, you know, they need the youth coming through. Oh, definitely, you. and it's, um, it's something that um, the, all the leagues are going to have to look at, especially yeah. the, the rural leagues, yeah. um, that fall off between 17 and, and yeah. 23 is, is yeah. massive, yeah. so um, whether that's developing all weathers and or changing your leagues to Saturdays or yeah. something because yeah. these young lads are wanting to go out exactly. I'm not just saying that because yeah. I own a pub but <laughs> 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 um, they, they, it is it's, it's to keep them guys oh, playing of course it is, yeah. they're going to have to yeah, um, they're going to have to look at trying yeah. to do something exactly. other than a Sunday morning yeah. you see a lot of leagues there now I need them any places where they have floodlights they're playing Friday night games and yeah. like, so that's no. ideal lad to play a match on a Friday night to have the weekend to the self after you know what I mean that's it so that's exactly it so goal kick there for Shelburne gone along a bit of a battle in the middle but it is the All Blacks come away with the ball and the ball down the middle Darren Norton gets oh. up and a lovely header onto that one oh. Kyle Rankin went through and there was a, a tackle there and there was a couple of lads asking for a free but I think in fairness two of them only had eyes for the ball I but actually thought it was probably a free myself because yeah. um, I thought Kyle got in front of it and he was took out after it but yeah. Um, Darren had a closer view than yeah, us. Yeah, he didn't. Dar Darren seen it different, and for a second there, Kyle still on the ground. I was hoping he wasn't going to be injured, but he seems to be back up to his feet there, and he's plodding away, not a bother to him. So, it just goes to prove as we talked about Darren Nottner got up really well there and won that header and gave his team the opportunity. And I think there's go it's going to be a game with plenty of opportunities, and it'll be come down to the team probably who takes the most of them because both teams are creating opportunities. You see, so there's no team really have at the very start there. The All Blacks were on top, and then sort of Shelburne have had a couple of minutes of a bit of, bit of dominant pressure, but. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a good battle so far. They're evenly matched. Yeah, um, you love to see it in a cup so final, Nicky. Yeah, Shelburne are probably a little bit more direct. All Blacks are playing a little bit more yeah. the silkier football, but that makes for that. Sometimes that makes for a good game. Yeah, exactly. So. Coming up to ne nearly twenty minutes gone, and it's after flying by. Flew by, as we said, two two good goals. All Blacks bouncing back very quick after going one down, but. There he is again, Kyle Rankin, trying to get on the ball in the middle, gets up, wins the header. That one drops to the Shelburne man. 
it's, it's, it's one thing that is tough to play against Nicky if you're up against a three man midfield it's always tough just to have time on the ball in the middle and that the All Blacks so far have done really really well to sort of snuff out anything that Shelburne have tried to put through the middle yeah. as we say that a lovely flick on by Shane Cassidy to try to get Aaron Goff down the outhand side but the goalkeeper there for Shelburne young Luke Connor comes out and does really well and good starting position and mops that one up yeah he mopped that one up and when you have the three in centre midfield it just gives you that little extra option to have a quick pass and yeah. it opens up for find that little man in space yeah. um, and when you have somebody like Peter um, or Trevor or Kyle Rankin, should I say again, um, they're very good passers of the ball, yeah. you know, so, yeah. and they're comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Looking to build down the outside, Darren Norton gets the header back towards it. It is number 10, Barry Kelly, who's playing the centre midfield today, but that's a lovely cushioned header in fairness from um, from the number five there, Gary Moore, just to knock that one back to his keeper and take the pressure off. And all Blacks comfortable playing out from the back. Direct ball this time, but that's coming met by Patrick Barron, number four, with a great header. Shelburne, All Blacks now with plenty of time, ball at the back, when to go along, ball over the top, mm, looked like it was going to beat the defender for a second, but <laughs> he done did. really, really well to get up and get ahead on that one. Podrick Lynch, is the, he done very well just to get it there, a little yeah. flick to, to keep it away from... All, all it takes there is that little flick Adam. in your in, you miss yeah. that in your in, you know what so I mean? So that's it, <laughs> and the, Shel uh, the All Blacks um, front two look, look yeah, quite quick, quick Shane yeah, looks yeah. very quick, and uh, so does Adam Devericks. Bet switch of play there. Have it 2v1 now. 2v1 down the right hand side. Beautiful feet by Owen Kelly to turn inside. Gets his number two, Shane Cullen away down the right hand side. Cuts in. Oh. Return ball back to him. Another lovely set of feet. Opportunity. Oh, oh the keeper does well just to save that one with his feet, I think. But yeah. that's a beautiful football down the right hand so side between Owen Kelly and Shane Cullen. A 1-2 and Owen Kelly cut in and just unfortunately for, for Shelburne couldn't find the finish but a great bit of play down the outhand side. Lovely little bit of play from um, Owen Kelly and Shane Cullen and they really opened it up um, and that's where they're going to get the joys down the in them pockets yeah. of space uh, yeah. just outside of like the, said, the back three. So. Too, if, if the wing if the wing backs are, are slow to, to tuck in, it's going to leave pockets of space in there to, in to behind, get down. Yeah. Yeah. So. You, can, you can bank on your, your full backs to get into that space and create the overlap. They want to have a lot of joy there. Yep, and that's what they've done that time and uh, they created a very good chance and they're unlucky. Be a throw to Shelburne on the far side. And go along down the wing and down towards your number nine on Burke. Burke just trying to get a corner out of that but didn't do just enough and the All Blacks man was forced to kick over the sideline for a throw in. Shelburne don't hang about and they get us back on their way really quick. Looking to get the ball into the feet, they were looking for an offside but no flag raised. Shelburne were looking for the big switch but Darren Norton has time in the middle to take that one on his chest but not too much time, it was number 12, Brian Minogue straight away was in there with a the tackle. Yeah, Brian got in, closed him down, put him under a bit of pressure but Darren didn't panic and... Uh, he uh, moved Darren's it up the line. There's plenty of experience in there. It's not his first cup final either, so no. he'll have um, he'll be exactly the type of player that you want in your team. You know what I mean? He'll be he'll be calm in there. And so I suppose it works both ways. We talked about having a nice young, fresh set of 17 or 18 year old legs <laughs> in there. Well, he he's going to be looking at it the very same way. Kyle Rankin will know how good it is to have Darren and as you said, Peter in there with him. They've been here before. They've started to play at it. You know, like the higher divisions as yeah. well. So they'll so. they'll start to carry him along at times too. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, when um. We would have played Kilmore a few years um, when I was manager of Shamrock Rovers and yeah. Darren would have been one of them midfielders yeah. in it when he played in Kilmore that time. Very competitive, um, yeah. very competitive, but very fair and honest as well, you know, a re really good player. Yeah. Opportunity there, Kyle Rankin was just looking to get Aaron Goff in, but that one was just over hit there and I suppose that a little bit of moisture on the pitch is going to make it hard for those balls to hold up until it dries out another little bit, but... Ah, yeah, thankfully it is starting to clear even more here in Furry Carrick, so we're in for a good day by the looks of it. Yeah, definitely. Remember, we are back live a tr later on in the afternoon as well for the Ben and Crane Wexford Cup final between North End and uh, Corey Rangers. So, sure to tune in for that one as well. Long ball here from Shelburne, though, back to back to business here. And in fairness to the to the right midfielder, their own Kelly for Shelburne's had a great game so far. He's been getting on that ball and been dangerous for them. So, yeah, they'll be looking to get him down that right hand side as much as he can. He has a very good set of feet there, and he's not afraid to cut in on the left either. No, and he lo he looks very comfortable when the ball is at his feet there. Um, so and he is causing um, uh, that more a little bit of trouble whenever he gets at him. That's really good play from the nine on Burke there just to nick the ball off the defender and knock it off him for a corner. So another corner kick here to be taken. No. Oh. Yeah, Owen, Owen looks nippy, doesn't yeah. he? He's, yeah, he's, he's full of energy, stature, I think, yeah. yeah, and, and he looks he's he's looks not quite nippy. Well, you can see there with the two strikers for Shelburne, they're not to stand to a side, they're interchanging. Do you know what I mean? So no. he is going to take the corner himself. So it'll be a right-footed out swinger. Good ball. In. Keeper, came and, keeper came and it just went over the keeper. I think he couldn't, didn't manage to get off the ground, but danger's not gone. Oh. Ball in towards the back and 
that one just barely clips over the top of the crossbar and I think there was there was a man on the back post for All Blacks but if that one was just below the crossbar I don't think he was getting anywhere near it Nicky. Yeah it looked like the game was in slow motion there for yeah. a second. Um, it's took an eternity for Yeah it took an eternity yeah so um, but uh, yeah All Blacks um, they were living under the edge there alright but um, every time um, Shelburne stick a ball into that box with a delivery the look the looks yeah. dangerous so um, sh um, All Blacks look to be panicking a little oh, bit. Yeah. Owen Cummins in the order for All Blacks come for one or two and he's I know that time he looked like he was impeded when he was coming but um, it's great when you can get a keeper to do it but if, if the keeper comes and he misses he can put his team in a little bit of danger but look All Blacks got away with that one no goal conceded and they'll, they'll reset again for the next one but it is something they're going to have to look at trying to get a better handle on those set pieces from Shelburne definitely and if, if you look actually both goalkeepers are quite small yeah um, both lads are small towards a lot of the lads out on the yeah, pitch so it, yeah. it's unusual to, to see yeah. Only now for Shelburne to break again. That's a great ball spread out wide. Brilliant. Fairness to number three, Dot Moore, there now done really, really well just to get a touch on that and turn it around and won himself the free kick. But tried to play it quick, but he was played it from the wrong position, so he just forced to go back by the referee. No, Darren pulled him back. And in fairness, Dot, he looks very composed there um, in the back three. Yeah. And um, he's left footed, which uh, it, it, suits. It, yeah. it adds that little bit of balance. Yeah. Um, he's not looking to come back in onto his, his right, right foot the whole time. Exactly, yeah. So, and it's a. Uh, he looks comfortable. Very comfortable. Yeah, the three lads in the back, they look. You see, sometimes there you get three. You have to have look. The, as we've mentioned a couple of times, this three-five-two formation. It is a specialised formation. You have to have three good centre halves to be able to play it. You know what I mean? You can't just throw any lad in there. Yeah. It's a, it's a different formation. Centre halves are used to having that little bit of help outside them and their full backs maybe. And yeah. And you don't when you put your head up. Sometimes you don't have someone there for that added protection. It takes a while to get used to it, I suppose. The, it's a it's a narrower formation, I suppose, as well. Yeah, it is. Um, I uh, it's actually the formation I I. Played with Shamrock Rovers for ten well ten years myself and my father. Yeah. We stuck with it, um, um, and um, it's a formation we always liked because yeah. we, we you have your five in the centre exactly. midfield. Yeah. You're able to get control of a lot of That's junior yeah. junior games in Wexford. A lot of teams were only playing four at a time. Yeah. We always had that extra body, you know, um, and that, midfield, that yeah. it suited us, you know. Uh, yeah. So and it looks like um, it's a great formation to play when you have the players to do it. I yes. Nicky, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So well, we were lucky that time. We'd really good lads' energy on the wing. Oh, Darren Notton does well to block that one down. An opportunity here, ball across. Oh. oh, an absolutely great save with the with the feet there from Luke Connor. But it was that was that man again causing causing danger. Darren Norton into Iron Goff and Iron Goff got the shot away, but the keeper done well just to flick that one away with the feet. Yeah, he. Um, it doesn't matter what way to save him, it with, whether it's hands, long, face, or feet. As long as you as um, long as you keep it out. But real good tackle in the middle there from Gary Moore to stop the ball, sticking at the feet of Owen Burke and All Blacks looking to build down the middle, back into the danger man again in that midfield. Kyle Rankin. Calm, relaxed, time on the ball. Oxit Darren Norton back to ranking again. He goes out wide to right, out right to Shane, Shane Goff. And to get at the full back. You get the delivery in. Does get the delivery in, but that one's just gone out for a goal kick there. Couldn't, couldn't get the delivery he was looking for, but. Didn't get the whip on it, but Aaron, Aaron looks dangerous every time he gets yeah. the ball down this left side. Um, yeah. The two twin brothers. The two brothers are causing yeah, a lot of trouble so there. The right there. Yeah, Aaron and Shane. And all yeah. Blacks will be delighted with how the two of them have started. And so in fairness, so far, Shelburne haven't had much of an answer for him because they're, they're getting really, really wide and they, they're really pulling out them, them full backs as well into the, into yeah. the danger area. Yeah, so yeah, they surely are. You're 100% right there. Yet again, that man, that more, they're getting up and winning that header, but an opportunity over the top. And on Cummins with a good starting position. Opportunity and just to roll it out there now to Peter Goldsmith, and he has time on the ball to deliver it long. He never looked to kick it long, so obviously yeah. that's going to be a feature that yeah. they. They, they've been doing all year long or yeah, play out from the back and look when you have a good surface under your oh. feet it's quite a lot easier too but an opportunity here now and Kyle Rankin coming back with an absolutely super challenge I think the Shelburne lads were appealing for a penalty Nicky but I think that was an absolutely super challenge it was fantastic perfect. fantastic yeah. challenge and, and Darren is a very experienced referee yeah. um, I don't think he'll um, listen or be bought no. by the crowd today no. um, and uh, in fairness to Darren he's very little blow the whistle no, you know, no there's been a few the little heavy really challenges well, yeah. but he's just let it go so yeah. hopefully yeah. that'll continue for the rest of it that more looking to go along again there but that one just held up in the wind an opportunity but ball does go out there just number seven on kelly couldn't manage to keep it in it'll be an opportunity you know for all blacks to work a throwing down the left hand side and it'll be the center half that more to come out and take it himself ball into the feet yet again yet again that man on kelly just gets there makes it stick opportunity now for shelburne to break 
number 11 there, Dara Bulger trying to get it out wide again towards Owen Kelly, but he was just muscled out there by Dot Moore, and Dot Moore does really well to win a, a throw in for his team. A good battle out there, isn't between between Dot and, and, and Owen out there? Yeah, good very good battle. battle two, two big physical players. Yeah, two, um, and there's no no dirt or anything no, in no it, just two enough. strong lads and they're, they're the coming up Owen against Kelly each other. He's, he's a big man, but I tell you, he have a silky set of feet on him there at the same yeah. time. As sometimes you'll see your sort of your big tall man there is big and powerful, and they're yeah. the one. And then when you see a man like that pull out the, the turns that he has so far, it's been great to see. Surprise you. Yeah, Darren not now in the ball in the middle. And again, it is on Kelly coming in off his wing just to break it up a little bit. But that man, Aaron Goff, tidies it up back to Dot Moore. And a really good challenge then. I think Shelburne, Shelburne have slightly uh, changed their system a little bit. It looks um, looks like um, Dara, uh, Dara Bulger's after dropping out yeah. in to pick up Peter Goldsmith yeah. there. So they're leaving... Um, Gone to the five in it, it, lo it looks like yeah. it for the last few minutes there Levon, anyway. Levon so yeah, so, um, so they've um, they're trying to sew up that midfield Six maybe five, for yeah. um, for a little while, and just getting Dara to try and support him now. Yeah, exactly. It'll be when when the ball sticks to Burke, it'll be up to Dara then to push on, and yeah. that's exactly what they've done here straight away. So Number eleven, Dara Bulger. So the ball has dropped in there, and oh, that more does really well to cut out that pass that was on his way out there. To Dara Bulger in fairness. And if he does that, it will be harder for the back three to pick yep. him up because one of them can't come out onto him. Yeah, so he, he might be able to get space like he is now. Oh, oh just loses his foot on the edge of the box. Lovely touch on the edge of the box. Trouble not gone just yet, but All Blacks now coming out. Darren Norton on the ball in the middle. Powers out through the middle of midfield, gets his head up. The ball in towards Shane Cassidy, but the centre half does really, really well to come across and cut that out. Again, Darren Norton though, doesn't, doesn't give up and wins it back for his team. Ball out to Aaron Goff. First time ball into the feet of Shane Cassidy. He's been excellent so far. Well, now that I said it, he gave the ball away yeah. straight away. Commentator scores. Of course. <laughs> but um, no, he's been excellent. He's done all that dirty work. He's yeah. after winning so much dirty ball there. And you, you need one of them guys. Yeah. Makes such a difference to a team you have a lad in there. Just, just picking up those, those 50 50 challenge balls is what you want. And he's, Aaron's a good, tough player, so he'll do that all day. Yeah, and, and it's the five 10 yard passes. Yeah. And yeah. it, it, they're so underrated, yeah. but they're the, the, the passes that win most of the games. Yeah, the, yeah, five, the, ten yards. The Roy Keane type of player, as they call it, does nothing that absolutely spectacular. It's, it's just, just everything simple. Yeah, and it just wins the ball, five yards, yeah. ten yards, and give it to the lads who can create something. And you're looking at you've year, years of managerial experience there as well. You know if you're going to have a lad like that in your team, it's just going to go in and do everything simple. It just makes your job a whole lot easier, doesn't it? Sure, he'd be the first one on your team sheet yeah. week in, week yeah. out. Do you know, um, He's your eight out of ten, seven, eight yeah. out of ten every, every single week. Yeah, never gives, yeah. never has a bad game, yeah. but just always does exactly, everything yeah. right. And if you can, if you can get a couple of them on your team, well, then you're laughing. <laughs> oh yeah, sure they are. They're not easy found. No. Aaron Goff just gonna leave that one out to that more. That man Darren Norton again. Back to Peter Goldsmith. Back out to that more. Dot gets his head up. Delivery in. Comes off the defender. Trouble not gone yet. Breaks on the edge of the box. Lovely flick over the top. Darren Norton trying to get on the end on that one, but. The pitch just uh, yeah, yeah. Out off the end of it. You but mentioned it um, a few minutes ago. Um, All Blacks really they don't mind just leaving two at the back there. No. Um, I was looking across and it was two v two, two and two. Yeah, Dan Moore is the one that seems to be going he a lot. Stepped, yeah. stepped out and there was nobody looking to come back there, so they're obviously quite comfortable themselves yeah. that they they'll pick up the and two, the two boys back there um, are obviously Gary Moore. Uh, Gary Morder and Connor Blaine, the two of them are obviously backing each other in a 2v2 situation. Look, it's great to see that type of confidence in a team too as well, but Definitely. you just wonder if there's an opportunity there. It's like you said, and <laughs> if, if Shelburne can cop onto that, that they're leaving and they can sort of have that third man ready to go and the keeper maybe gets in and go along, yep. it does leave you a little bit open. It does, all right, but... Look, we'll have to wait. They're the ones on the pitch, Nicky, you know, we're, we're only commentating, so they're obviously know what they're at more than we do. <laughs> it's, a he it's a hell of a lot easier up here for us. That's it, yeah, so. exactly. Oh... We are Nicky, you nearly got a touch of that one yourself. Yeah. The keeper's clearance, but so. but it's it's um it's something that um we're just talking about. Yeah. It's easier for us to see the shapes and the exactly. tactics up here. Yeah. Um, I'm sure if any of the managers had the opportunity, Nicky, to be up at this uh, at this level to see a game, it does definitely gives you a different perspective on the game. Definitely, it? and you see the rugby lads doing it. Yeah. <coughs> so I've often wondered why the soccer. Uh, yeah. Managers have never done it, yeah. um, even the professional ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you see a few of them go up. Yeah. <coughs> but they always come down onto the touchline. Maybe it's just a tradition. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. That to do it. So. 
Good ball out wide there, looking for Aaron Goff again. But we'd see, we'd see it, Nicky. We'd, we'd do the, the Wexford FC games and stuff out here as well. And we see Walter sometimes would send lads up just in, in beside us here, just even for the first 10 minutes and get a look at a bit, yeah. a bit of shape or a bit of structure, definitely. But you can definitely get a different perspective on a game. You can see things differently from up here and on that flat level, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, um, I actually probably managed better when I was suspended because <laughs> I was up behind the goal That's and it. I was up away from everybody yeah. and I seen it. Um, so Not that you were suspended um, that much, don't No, you know? no, just <laughs> once or twice. But um, it just gave you a different perspective and uh, yeah. a different view of the game. Yeah. Um, sometimes when you're on the sideline, you're getting wrapped up in everything and you don't yeah. see um, you don't see everything that you, you should be seeing. So Another long ball. Good kick in there by the keeper in fairness, but good length on that, but... All Blacks do really, really well just to break it up and done really well from the long ball there. Apart from the couple of early set pieces there that they had under trouble, they seem to settle into the game and they're dealing, they are dealing better with them now. Yeah, no, definitely. Opportunity there, a bit of an argument there over whose throw it was, but <laughs> the linesman was adamant he was correct, so the referee obviously is always going to back him and an opportunity now for Shelburne to break down the right hand side. Number 12 oh. gets in there. Oh! Oh! Fantastic goal. I tell you, the All Blacks are going to be a little bit unhappy with that. They were adamant that that was their throwing, but an absolutely super goal. And we'll get an, an opportunity. I think it was number 12, Brian, Brian Minogue, got down the, through the middle there. The, there it is. It's that, that little ball on the right hand side, absolutely super. And the, look, the late arrival at the man from the back. That's oh. what it was. The defenders totally unaware of where he was. And I think it was the, the left midfielder. I think it was Brian Lynch that came in. Yeah, off the back it looked there like it. Goal, and so. And it came from that little pocket of space we're talking outside yeah. of the back three yeah. that time, man. And, and, and quality um, of ball through there, yeah, fantastic, yeah. Perfect so. wait, and, and Shelburne now back into the lead. Yeah, geez, a great time to score as well, isn't it? So yeah, just 35, 35 minutes gone here. Yeah. Well, any ten minutes to oh. half time, but oh, it's back a goal again, straight away. Adam Devricks this time, I think it was. And I don't think people will be happy with that one. Literally off the post, off his foot and in, and. We'll get an opportunity to have a look at that. Not even a chance to catch your breath there, Nicky, and we have the equaliser here straight away. No, no, we have the equaliser and... Aaron Goff down the left-hand side, and yeah, just a perfect flick at the front post, and it actually went through the keeper's legs by the look of it, Nicky. So, yeah, so I just see the All Blacks lads are they're giving out there to still to Garrett. Yeah, keeper Late reaction from yeah. the goalkeeper, all right, but what a, what a reaction from All Blacks, so... Yes. It's back level. It's, ba it's back level, 2-2, an absolutely humdinger of a game here so far at Furry Carrick Park. Yeah. But, um, we're, we're back. We're, you might as well say we're back to nil-nil, back to level playing field, and All Blacks will be delighted because they weren't too happy with not give, being given that throw. And it did. I was just about to say to you, if this results in a goal, Nicky, there could be a bit of trouble here, and it did result in a goal. But in fairness, the All Blacks they went straight down the other end, and it was that man again with the delivery, Aaron Goff. Yeah. Many times have we mentioned his name down that side already today, Nicky? Definitely. We're not even at half time. No, he's done very, very well, and every time he goes down that side. He looks like he's going to create something. Yeah. Um, Shelburne are going to have to do something. I know number two Shane Cullen is out there on him at the moment, and I think it's going to be more. It's more of a job of maybe of maybe Owen Kelly is going to have to start tracking him a little bit more because Owen Kelly's doing super going forward for Shelburne. Yeah, he doesn't he's he's just passing the man. He's passing them on. Obviously, it was right fullback as you'd expect, but I don't think maybe if there's not enough talking between the two there, maybe to let him know he's passing them on. But he's getting plenty of space and he's causing a lot of danger down. He that surely flight. is, and the thing with um, Aaron, he has the experience. Yeah, so he spots the space and. Yeah. He he just drifts into it and he's making it very very hard for Shane Cullen to pick yeah, him up he is. Um, so uh, and he sort of he, he leaves it late sort of to go into that space he doesn't commit to that run right down the wing he'll drop he'll drop into the pocket to pick the ball up yeah. and he's quite happy just to get at you with it but yeah definitely yeah I'd agree with you there alright Adam just under 10 minutes to go here now in the first half of this Neil O'Sullivan Cup final and we've been treated to an absolute cracker of a game so far and sunshine starting to come out now as well Nicky so we couldn't ask for much more no no Except for this leak in the roof here, surrounding me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get on to the backroom staff about that, Nicky, and make sure that, make sure that we get a roof repair put in your next contract, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it, yeah. No point in getting makeup done. That's it. And here. <laughs> Aaron Goff again back on the ball there, and Darren Norton just dropping back in to help out his back three. Goes back as far as on Cummins. Has all the time in the world just to open out and give it out to Conor Breen. Conor Breen with plenty of space in front of him, time to get his head up. I used to get that ball into the feet of Adam Devericks there, but couldn't oh, what a ball. Stick, but it's not oh. gone yet. And a bit of a heavy touch from Kyle Rankin, just let him down a bit there as he had an opportunity to break, but Aaron out wide again. Not trouble not gone. Shout from Darren Norton there, letting him know there's plenty of time. Darren has time here now to get his head up. Norton, lovely ball pinged towards the back post to the other brother, Shane, off at the back post, but 
fairness to the left full back there for Shelburne, Kevin Collins done really well just to get up and nick that one away. He done really well. I actually thought that might have been a bit of an opportunity for Kyle Rankin if um, his first touch had been a little bit yeah, better. It was a lovely ball from Shane yeah. that time. If his first and touch um, stuck there, he was in with a chance on goal anyway. Yeah, well, the whole centre had opened up yeah. at that stage, so... Um, yeah, I, I suppose that's what you could see now, like with, with um, All Blacks causing so much trouble down the flanks, Shelburne going to start worrying about the flanks, and then holes may start to c- sort of come into the, into the middle, then yeah. three boys in the middle. Definitely. It's like so. you said, it does it does look like they're, uh, Shelburne they are still expecting Dara Bulger to drop in and give a helping hand there, and he is dropping back yeah. in now, but that's going to be a tough job too, Nicky, you know what I mean? It's going to take a lot out of him, and he's, oh, if he's do, doing a hell of a lot more running there than maybe he expected, but... That's it, and um, as we spoke earlier on, it's a big, big pitch. Yeah. Oh, good tackle. An absolutely super challenge there by Conor Breen. And this is when it's going to become tough for Shelburne, I guess, is when they break, and that striker is going to go into the feet of Owen Burke, and if he, if he gets his head up and there's nothing there for him, Nicky, it's going to make his job a hell of a lot harder too. Yeah, definitely. Um, we've seen um, young Luke um, Murphy yesterday for Wexford Albion. Yeah. he done a fantastic for a young man. Yeah. He dragged um, Albion up the pitch um, on several occasions. So um, I'm sure Shelburne's um, uh, own Burke will have to do yeah. something very, very similar um, yeah. and get his team up the t- pitch. Tough job as a lone striker. Oh, Mickey, definitely, it? yeah. yeah. So uh, It's unthankful. Yeah. Everybody says strikers are there for goals, but yeah. sometimes um, they have to do that job yeah. as well, and it's not easy. And well, for one by Peter. And ball through. Number nine for the All Blacks there. Shane Cassidy wasn't giving up on that one. The keeper just had to come out and deal with it. And Luke Connor done very well. Good clearing kick, but... A little bit of a lack of communication, I think, between himself and his backline there. His backline were looking for him to come, and I don't think he was he was too happy with having to come. <laughs> no, he didn't look like he looked more like a GA goalkeeper. He didn't want to leave his square, yeah. so. <laughs> um, but uh, he got it. He got it wrapped up anyway. Long ball down towards Owen Burke, and centre half does very well. Plenty of time, knocks it back, and very calm and collected at the back. on Cummins there, plenty of time just to pick a pass and get it back to his centre half. Yeah, in Bond. fairness to all blacks, they look uh, every one of them look comfortable on the ball, don't yeah, they? None of them have panicked at any, any t- at any stage. No, Peter Goldsmith now gets it out to left foot of that more. By the way, a lovely touch from Aaron Goff back inside to Goldsmith. He's looking to get Aaron Goff down that right hand side. This time, number two Shane, or the number two for Shelburne, Shane Cullen, does better and gets the ball back to a centre half and they get the clear and kick away. <coughs> Shout there. Your goals, but just let him let that one. That's beautiful football from All Blacks, and that's something that they do really well, oh. isn't it? It's just, but as we say, that commentator scores strikes again. The heavy touch, opportunity here for Shelburne, and an absolutely oh. superb save from Owen Cummins in the goal. I think the man outside for Shelburne was screaming for the little square pass, and he had a tap in. But in fairness, the striker backed himself to go, and in fairness to the keeper, he made a great one-on-one save. But sure, I'm sure he was full of confidence after scoring yeah. the, the uh, Shelburne second. Yeah, I um, want to see the first, just so the first card of the game, just for that challenge as well. It's number four there, Patrick Barron, to pick up the first yellow of the game. Yeah, in fairness, the goalkeeper. Um, Owen Cummins that time, he stood up yeah, as long as he, he could. Is. And the longer he stood up, he made the, the striker yeah. make a call instead of... Um, he done very well to yeah, narrow, so narrow the angle, but it does look like the yeah, Shelburne man has picked up a little bit of a knock in the meantime. Yeah, definitely. This right. is our, the first real free kick from the All Blacks, now an opportunity to put the ball in the box for them. Actually, he is. They've had a couple of corners, but yeah. the, this is the first um, from an angle like this to try and... I guess Shane, mm. one, as we said, one of the mentioned, one of the goths, Shane Goff. Looks yeah. like it's going to be to hit this one, but... And yet again, you can look at it there. When he steps up to take this, it'll be All Blacks only leaving themselves with two in the back, and it looks like it's going to be two. It's going to two of the Shelburne players are going to stay up by the looks of two. So yeah, the definitely. Shelburne can break quick here. They'll have an opportunity for, for a two v two. Yeah. So um, into the last five minutes of normal time here. So this being just a, a perfect time to to try get the tar- a, a third goal for for the All Blacks and go in. But I don't think. I think both teams will be happy enough, Nicky. I know, look, I suppose you could say Shelburne won't be happy to concede straight away just let her score. And they do say it's the most dangerous time to concede is just let her score. And you sort of switch off for a minute yeah. to let her score, don't you? But so in fairness to the All Blacks, both times there have just bounced back really well. They haven't given up once, have they? No, definitely haven't given up. And um, like it shows a bit of character to come yeah. back straight away because uh, they scored quite soon, the first one, to equalise yeah. and then equalise again. So... Um, they haven't could've given could've Shelburne any comfort in, in, the, in the lead that they can no. try and build something no. or anything like that. But uh, in fairness, the first 40 minutes have been held for letter. Yeah, it's been, it's been up and down and it's been very open. In the second half. You might see tired legs come into the second half to play a lot, but we'll be Shane Goff to deliver this. I lofted ball in towards the middle. Does break in there. Oh, I think it was the Barry Kelly done well. Yeah. It, it, it is Barry Kelly. Yeah, it is Barry Kelly. Yeah, number 10, Barry Kelly, done really well just to stick in a foot there and get that clear because dropped into a really dangerous space there. 
But the danger not quite gone yet, but now the opportunity to try to get away and they were looking to get that man on Kelly down the outside. But as we mentioned before, that more the left center half, they're quite happy just to get in there and travel with the ball and Yeah. So I suppose it, it, there's less danger maybe now in what they were doing because as we said, Shelburne have dropped into the five man midfield now, so there's only leaving them maybe two V one up top now. So maybe yeah. it'll allow maybe that more sort of to even go further into that space yeah. now, do you know what I mean? And really he looks very comfortable stepping out of the yeah. tree there, um up the wing or yeah. even into the middle there, he looks very comfortable. It'll be that more to take this throw in into the chest of Darren Norton, knocks it back to Goldsmith. Goldsmith time on the ball, gets it back into the feet and Norton. Love I'll look for the return ball to Goldsmith and now an opportunity to get out but that one is going to go all the way through to the goalkeeper Owen is well positioned and he's yeah. rolling it out again he hasn't even looked to kick the ball long not once, once not once not no, once everything is kicks and suppose if you can get that ball on the deck and if Shelburne are not going to put too much pressure on him up there it's an opportunity just to build your attack isn't yeah, it yeah definitely yeah you take, you take away the risk of the long 50-50 ball straight away Shelburne do really well to come through there and take that but the danger is not gone but it's a powerful header Shelburne again go along down towards number nine, ask them to do the job in their own Burke, but that's a lovely tidy and header there from Connor Breen in the back three and then the keeper gets it going quick. That more. That sends one long towards Darren Norton. And that man again, Barry Kelly, number ten, does really, really well. Danger not gone and Darren Norton flicks a lovely ball oh, down the outhand side, left hand side. Aaron Goff. Going. Centre half couldn't allow that one to go because it did take a nick off the man, so it would have been a corner, but he does well and it will be a throw though. Got more coming into the last minute of normal time here in the first half. Yeah, and It'll be a perfect opportunity to see. That's right. It'd be great. Um I'm sure the two teams will be happy yeah. if they're going now at uh, half time yeah. and they can reset and they can yeah, you can get Min, you'll just be able to have it boat managers will be able to have a chat, have with, a him chat with him exactly and, just and um, but it'll be, I think the boat managers just be asking for more of the same, maybe obviously cutting out conceding the goals, but like attacking wise two teams have done really well, they've went out and started to set their plan in place and stuck to it. Yeah, like. definitely. And the other thing, um it's very, very hard actually to communicate down here. Um, yeah. when you're in the dugout because the pitch is so big and so wide. Yeah, you're, it's you're very hard to get a message ac across yeah. Um, at times, so you're um, asking someone to go to the far so side. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so um, but um, that's um, they'll, they'll all be able to get in a half time yeah. and they'll be reassessing um, yeah. the situation. I, I suppose when you come down here to Furry Carrick Park for the cup final, managers in the extra football they're not they're not they're not so used to being told right see that square now you have to stay in it there, or they're used to nearly running down so the line with their players. Sure you know what I mean? That's exactly <laughs> it. So um. Like um, in in the Wexford Football League, you actually have a technical side. Yeah. So your whole line yeah. is your technical area. Exactly, yeah. So you can move up and down it and up and yeah. down it. So um, it's a little bit different when you're told to stay inside. Yeah. The you're box, like you're like you're being told to stay in the cage. <laughs> so it is, it it's hard to break. Hard to break a habit of a lifetime. That's it, isn't it? What an opportunity here, ball over the top. But yet again, it is on Cummins out there with a great starting position and takes the pressure off his team. And we're into added time here now. And Barry Carr Park, so it'll be whatever Darren Ennis chooses to add on here in the first half. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a massive amount. No, there's no Nothing. injury time whatsoever, Nicky. So no. there it is. Half time here in the Neil O'Sullivan Cup final. It is the All Blacks 2, Shelburne 2. Great half of football, Nicky. And we'll be back with the second half. And hopefully, it'll be another a repeat of the first half because that was good football. Yeah, great. Um, it was fantastic. It was easy to look at and, yeah. and very enjoyable. So yeah. hopefully, it'll be every bit as good. Exactly. And we'll be back after the half time break. <laughs>
Welcome back to Furry Carrick Park for the second half of this Neil O'Sullivan Wexford League Cup final between All Blacks FC and Shelburne United. It is two all here at the break. Um, great first half of football there, Nicky. And it looks, Nicky, like we're going to be Shelburne United to kick us off when it comes to changes. It looks like they do have two lads on the sideline ready to come in. It looks like it's going to be number 13, Jess Quigley, and number 15, Patrick Boland, to come into the into the game straight away. Yeah, it does. Um, it's quite surprising to do the two at halftime. Yeah. Um, because I thought Shelburne were in, 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 well, obviously it's too old. They were definitely yeah. in the game. So, bar they're down to injuries, maybe yeah. they're tactical. We don't know. We'll know now in a couple of minutes when, when they take to the pitch. But, um, yeah, t it shows the managers being brave anyway. Yes, it is, so, yeah. yeah, so they're very brave. If John Furlong had turned down the music, now we'd be all right. <laughs> Uh, well, look, it looks like, as I said, 13 and 15, two, two sets of fresh legs though, to start the second half. <laughs> yeah. Could make a big difference to Shelburne to start, maybe. They're going, they're going gung-ho from the start of the second half and they're going to throw everything into it. Yeah, so... Um, I'm, trying to have like a, I'm trying to have a look around the pitch and see who it is to come out. I think it's Dara Bulger and Shane Cullen. I, uh, yeah, it's, I think the two of them have come down, so yeah. I presume they're more tactical changes yeah. than... so it is. Shane Cullen has, has come out and... I think the other one, as you said, is the striker. It is Dara Bulger who's come out as well. So maybe yeah. it could be it could be a case of especially with maybe bringing on the Dara Bulger coming out. Maybe he's an out and out attacker, and if we're going to stick to this four or five one, maybe maybe number fifteen Patrick Bowling is more of a midfielder to come in there. Yeah, well, it looks like it. He's lining up here on the left hand yeah. side, and uh, the two of them are on the left hand side. So yeah. obviously. Um, they're after putting somebody over onto Aaron Goff, yeah, and well it, um, it looks like Brian Lynch has gone back. Is gone. He was playing on the left there. It looks like he's gone into the middle there a little bit now for the kickoff here so anyway. So yeah, so um, yeah, a load of shuffles. Um, yeah, we are back underway here, and it is as we said, it's Shelburne shooting from right to left here, and the black and white, and it's the green and yellow, the All Blacks from left to right. Yeah, and straight into it straight away. And if if you're only tuning in here live on on Facebook in association with the stream team. You missed a cr cracking first half of soccer, and hopefully we'll be in for the second. The second half being the very same, Nicky. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Um, it was it was very enjoyable first yeah. half, and um, flew by. Definitely did. Yeah, I'm just confirming those just those changes confirmed for us. So is as we said and all blacks have an opportunity but yet again number number five there for Shelburne Podrick Lynch has won so many of those headers in the first half in fairness to him and yeah he's been very solid he has his hands full there with the two nippy forwards with Adam and Shane Cassidy yeah. so Shane's on the ball now lovely set of feet makes it back out to the to the left midfielder that man Aaron Goff again it was caused a lot of trouble for Shelburne in the first half and he'd be looking to do the same with him in the second half and yeah, as we said, there is a bit of a wind whipping up here, so the All Blacks will have the benefit of the wind in this half. Yeah, definitely. Um, just looking at the way they've set up there, I'd be a little bit concerned for Shelburne that it just since the start of this half, they've gone very, very deep. Yeah. Um, Owen Burke has left. Look at he. There must be thirty yards between him and the closest yeah. midfielder. Yeah, and it's going to be a so tough job for him. Yeah. For for me, I always thought the best form of um, defence is attack. Well, that's it, isn't it? Um, yeah. So um, you'd, you'd be just looking at Shelburne to maybe yeah. to try and get a little further up. No, we're only seconds into the first half, but yeah, you'd wonder just how the, the way they're setting up the legs, Yeah. But in, and I, I did mention I mentioned that we had a chat there at half time myself and Yunick and I just thought that Shelburne went out of the game a little bit just towards the end of the first half and whether that was a little bit of maybe tired legs coming in but look they've been they've been in they've had the chats and maybe maybe it is something that they've said that they're going to soak up a little bit of pressure for the first couple of minutes you know what I mean and they done yeah. it in the first half they soaked up sort of five or six minutes of pressure from the All Blacks and went down the other end Definitely. and had an opportunity to score and I as know. we said that it is Shelburne are coming away and now Owen Kelly down that right hand side again lovely set of feet to skip past the full back great delivery but looks like there's going to be just too much on that one, but danger not gone. It is Patrick Boland out there. Gets it back to his other halftime substitute, Jess Quigley. Left footed, good ball in. Well cleared there, and an opportunity for the All Blacks to blur. But the substitution, Jess Quigley again, and we're we looking for those two sets of fresh legs down the left hand side to link up well in the second half form. Definitely, and they've done it there at that time. Um, the two of them played it, and it looks like Jess is um, a left footed player. Um, he, yeah. So he'll obviously add a bit of balance. We spoke about it in the first half. Yeah. But um, they're, they're getting the bodies up now and they're in a good attacking position on Kelly again. Looked like a bit of a push in the back to me, but ref Darren didn't see it. Referee Darren Ellis didn't see any difference. Mm. Keeper does very, very well there just to give his team a shout and let him know he was coming for that one. Yeah, he was cool, wasn't he, yeah, that time? he was, in fairness. And look straight, straight away, ball down on the deck, looking to get his team playing again. A lovely ball down. 
Shane Cassidy is onto it. Yeah. Uh, very yeah. good defending. I've been very impressed with Podrick Lynch, oh, actually. Yeah. He's done really well there. Um, yeah. In fairness, they're the type of tackles. If you don't time that time that well in your last man, you can very easy see yourself on a red oh. card or a yellow card at least, you know what I mean? But any time he's done it in the first half, he's done super well just to time the tackle well. And it's always been ball first in fairness to him. But Definitely. Yeah, again, um, they sort of took the pressure off his team, like he didn't he? And sure, look now, they've got a goal kick to defend the, the throw in um, very well. But um, on a big pitch, them tackles... If you miss it by a millimetre, the bigger the pitch is, it actually looks worse. You think it'll look worse on yeah. a smaller pitch. Because they're so open, um, it, it always looks that little bit worse. Yeah, you're just, it's just spread out more, isn't it? So yeah. you, you, you could be the, the last man on a small pitch, but when it's, as you said, the big pitch, you look even more like the last yeah, man. Yeah. So that's exactly it. All Blacks looking to play out from the back again. It's that man again, number four, Peter Goldsmith, who's in there to sort of just give the little bounce ball. Back to Dotmore, and Dotmore gets it out wide to Aaron Goff, and he returns it back in. Some lovely little close t- one-touch football here from the All Blacks, but Shelburne get in to nick it away, and a long ball through to Owen Burke, and he is on side here, and he, he's running one-on-one -on -one at the defence. Cuts out to his right-hand side, ball back across, oh, and there's the goal. goal! Absolutely superb Fantastic finish from Owen Burke. So we talked about it, Nicky, that he was going to be up there doing it on his own. He so just proved to us that he can he be up there and do it. He definitely done it on his own that time. That was a fantastic goal. We'll have um, a quick look at it, Nicky, again. That was superb. No. It was just the pressure, the pressure put on. What's that? That's the, We're the, waiting the for wrong. John to get his finger out here and getting it ready. No, we'll have a proper look. Look at that. He had a lot of work to do there, Nicky. Two, two yeah. defenders, and he... he Sort of took it on down the right hand side and put yeah. it at that far post. Don't yeah. need the keeper to be too happy with it. No, he uh, shouldn't be really beaten at the at your near post. You'd be disappointed. Yeah. But um, in fairness to um, to Gary Moore, he stood him up as long as he could, ran him into the corner, and yeah. I suppose Gary would have been hoping that um, his goalkeeper was going to pull yeah. him out of it. Um, yeah. But uh, no, um, a, a good finish, it and um, it puts him back in the driving seat. Exactly, Shelburne back in the lead here, three two. And it's again the All Blacks with all the work to do and see can the can they bounce back again? Yeah, uh, definitely. And we've seen fairly a fairly quick reaction every time from the All Blacks. So, so straight away here now they do have an opportunity here with Shane Goff to an opportunity to get the ball in the box and they'll be looking to hit it, hit it, a punch back straight away. Definitely, yeah. and it was something similar to Shelburne in the first half. Yeah, they scored in the first couple of minutes there, so I'm sure they'll want to hold out. Oh. Well, straight away there nearly was an opportunity there and they'll want to hold on to the lead a little bit longer this time yeah. and um, and try settle into the game you can see straight away there the All Blacks high press Nicky they're not looking to let let <laughs> Shelburne they're forcing them to go along yeah no. a lovely first touch I'm not too sure he'd be happy with the second touch yeah. oh darn opportunity again on Burke going one on one again great set of feet Darren Norton trying to get back can he get the shot away he does get the shot away, and this time the keeper makes a good save with his feet, but the danger's not gone. Ball's knocked back in. Oh. And it's good hands there by Owen Cummins. But I tell you, Owen Burke has come out of it in the second half. He's flying an opportunity there. I know it's a bit of a missed time pass there from Darren Norton back that gave the chance there. But all Blacks will just have to maybe not try overcomplicate now and just relax on the ball. There's a long way to go here. We're not even, so I suppose, nearly just, just over five minutes into the second half. So Yeah, definitely. They mean, as we spoke earlier, they don't need to panic. Um, they've shown that they can score goals. They've done it against uh, Wexford Bowes last week. Yeah. So did the and uh, there's goals dotted all over that All Blacks team. Yeah. But um, in fairness to Shelburne, they look like they're just going to try and soak it, counter, and yeah. away they go. And I suppose so. the, every time they've scored, that's what they've nearly hit him with, hasn't it? Been either, yeah. either a set piece or a counter attack. And in fairness yeah. to we we talk about Owen Burke having a tough job to do, but. He's done it well up there on his own so far. And in fairness, that time you know, it was number seven, Owen Kelly, and, and the substitute, number 15, Patrick Boland, have bombed up the outside of him. So he did have opportunities there to go, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they are they are getting that bit closer to support him. Yeah. So, um, as you said, maybe that's what Shelburne are going to do, Nicky. They're going to soak up the pressure and then try to hit him on the counter attack. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big, big pitch to try and do it. They're doing it now at the minute. To try and do it for 45 minutes, it, it is it's tough. It's a different task. So, um, but uh, they're doing it now, and that's what matters. Um, as you can see, the five in midfield for Shelburne now are stopping um, All Blacks playing the little triangles yeah. and, and playing that little bit. Oh, that, that's not too bad, though. 
Kyle Rankin trying to get uh, Shane Goff down the outhand side. And in the first six or seven minutes there of this first half, it looks like Shelburne backs are sort of staying out really wide and, and not letting the Goff brothers get on the ball as much. Now, as I said, there's only six minutes gone, but I think that's what I think that's the, the new left back 13 coming in there just quickly. I think that's why he'll be told, look, just get out wide yeah. and, and stick to number seven Shane Goff there and sort of cut out that trouble. Definitely, and it, and it looks like Shelburne have detailed each player to pick up man to man in the in the centre of midfield. So um, they're looking to probably try and win them individual battles um, that it. are so often overlooked. Good ball in there, but no All Blacks man there. And the Shelburne man ready to bring it away, but Kyle Rankin does really well to try win it back for his team. But that one goes through to the keeper, and he'll take all the time in the world. Take all the time in the world just to pick it up and. Or they'll probably go along here again as they have with most of the games, yeah. most of the balls in the first half, and just take the pressure off his team. And good kicking against the wind, in fairness, and yeah, not very much good communication kicking. there between the back line and two lads seem to go for the one ball, but got away with it, and Dot Moore was able to get it clear. Now an opportunity now for the All Blacks for an attack. Lovely ball through, but in fairness, number four for Shelburne there. He done very well Patrick there, didn't Barron, he? Patrick Barron, yeah, came across. and Patrick read it well and cut out, sniffed out any danger, but... He'll have to be um, careful in this half, too. He had picked up a yellow card in the first half, so he won't be able to take too many chances with challenges, but he done very well to pick up that one. No, he read that one very well and um, just sniffed it out just in time, but a free kick there. Just for a bit of a late challenge, Nif I think. A bit of a late on, push, it, yeah. there was nothing, yeah. nothing in it, nothing really. Nothing malicious in it. No, 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 a late push. No, some days you see, you know, give him some days or not. Good opportunity now to offer the All Blacks to put a ball in the box and, and test test that back line there. But it's one thing I said about Shelburne, they're a big physical team. Eh? There are plenty of tall players there in the back line. Yeah, loads looking down. And they're, even, they're evenly matched enough yeah. now in their height and their size. So um, <coughs> it all depends if they're touch well. Obviously, none of them are going zonal. You'll hear this zonal mark and, yeah. and all this kind of crap nowadays. Just go man for man. Man for man. Yeah. Touch tight. Good battle. I've never heard Space scoring a goal. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> Only went a shot. Strike on goal. Oh, what a oh, goal! What a strike! He's after catching everybody out. What a strike! So I think was it was it Peter Goldsmith? Was no, it? Uh, Shane Cassidy. Shane Cassidy, sorry, yeah, number nine, Shane Cassidy. What a strike! They get the All Blacks back, and yet again, Nicky, six minutes gone by, and they're back in the game after conceding. But what, what a, a strike! He must well, have forty yards, Nicky. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure the goalkeeper was caught unawares there on it, but. Um, I, uh, he'd be very, very disappointed. He didn't really move his his feet. Uh, no, I wouldn't say you expected it. No, would definitely not. Nobody was. I think but I, well, I uh, wasn't. Were you? No, I was waiting for the ball to be clipped into the box and try to get ahead on it, as we said. Yeah. But and I suppose that's the joys of it. Yeah. Nicky, the, as we said, Nicky, the win, bit of a wind behind him. Yeah, a bit and, of a wind and and look, not uh, the wind. Look, the wind didn't score that. That was one of the sweetest strikes you're going to see. If you if that goal was scored by a Liverpool player this afternoon in the Premier League, it'd be talked about for months, Nicky. Yes, I would. Um, definitely, we talked about it for yeah. For months and months with a, a fantastic strike and fitting yeah. for any cup final. That's for sure, yeah. We're actually after seeing some very good goals down here yeah, the last couple of days. Um, yeah. And even last week, the two yeah. goals. Uh, the the two quality of football goals. has been on display is great, in fairness. Yeah. That's, that's one of the best. Look, as you said, maybe a bit far out. The keeper might have tried, tried to think he would have done better with it, but yeah. it was clean and it dipped right at the end, straight into so. the roof of the net. So, yeah, All Blacks yet again bounce back. Three all here, an absolute great cup final so far. And, Plenty of time here left in the second half as well. So yeah, definitely. We, uh, we talked about the All Blacks being involved in a 6-4 game last week. We're not too far off that at the moment, Nicky. So no, no, and um, it's very unusual for a cup final to be so open, yeah. isn't it? They're normally very cagey, touchy affairs. Um, so, but this one is definitely the opposite. Yes. I suppose you you mentioned it, Nicky, before the game. Neither of these teams playing each other either. Sometimes can make for a great game, and but but Lloyd looks what you weren't wrong, were you? No, no. <laughs> sometimes they're just open. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure the the final, the Wexford Cup final later on this afternoon, they, it'll be their fourth, third or fourth time playing yeah. each other this year, and yeah. should they play each other year in, year out? So yeah. it, it, it's definitely not going to be as open they'll as this know, one. They'll, they'll know each other a little bit more. I think there'll be more feeling out in that one, Nicky, before there's any punches thrown. But that's it. Um, I suppose Shelburne are probably thinking to themselves, Nicky, many goals are going to have to score, and many times they'd have to go into a lead here before they can keep one. Yeah, and that's exactly fairness, it. They haven't probably went more than six, seven minutes with no. any lead, have they? No, definitely not. And I suppose and it's, t it's testament to the heart of the All Blacks team. That can be draining as well, yeah. mentally, um, yeah. as the game goes on. Obviously, you're, you're, it's been a long, long season. The game will go on that little bit longer, and yeah. you'll start saying, is this is this your day? Do yeah. you know, uh, we're after being yeah. in the lead three times now, so... Um, but no. Just, 
we'll keep if hopefully just it'll go and lead another two or three times and yeah. we'll have to keep talking about it yeah I can see he looks just looking down towards the bench of Shelburne looks like Shelburne are going to make their third change I can see can't quite manage to see what number he has on his back you just said but I can see the management are having a chat with another player to come into the game so looks to be a third substitution so maybe Shelburne looking to get in just fresh in another part of their game up maybe he spotted yeah. something or maybe someone's carrying a bit of a knock or tire him but Kyle yeah. Rankin's not tiring because he's been ever present in the middle of that midfield he's doing really well but as I said that he does give that ball away and looks to go along but that man Dot Moore does really well from that left centre half and lovely touch just to send it down but the Shelburne centre half gets across and it is that man again Padraig Lynch we've talked about him a few times he's had a great game and it looks like it's going to be Jamie O'Rourke I think Jamie O'Rourke on, number yeah, 8 so for Shelburne um, yeah. he was named in the starting team um, yeah. but for whatever reason maybe he's calling Having a bit of a knock or something like that that yeah. he didn't um, start, but um, he looks like he's coming. Yeah, young young striker. He's only he's only 19 years old, so he's a striker. So it looks like maybe maybe Owen Burke is tiring out there, maybe, and he's going to be the man brought in, or maybe they've decided to switch back to a top two, but or maybe come into a midfield. But look at, looking about his information, he is he's a striker. So yeah, sure. Look, we wait and see. He's described as a as a big strong target man. So well, the one thing we can say is. 58 minutes, Shelburne are not afraid to change it. No, they're you know, their there, management no. are, are going at it. A lot of the times, lads wouldn't be making changes as quick, so they're, yeah. they're acting very, very quick. We'll have a look now, very quick. I think that's is that number, is that number three, the, the right fullback, Kevin Collins, just making his way over, is it? Uh, it's either himself or is it Brian Lynch? Have a look now. We'll get it. We'll get a quick look at the the number on the back of the jersey as he walks away. But as we said, it is number eight. Jamie O'Rourke definitely to come in. And yeah, I think it's Brian Lynch coming out. So yeah. um, he has a bit of strapping on uh, around his back and things like that. So it could well be that he was maybe kind of knocked into the game. Exactly. So it is. As we said, number eight, Jamie O'Rourke, and by the looks of it, as we said, it was number six, Brian Lynch to come out. Yeah, number six, Brian Lynch, then to come out. So. Straight away, Jamie O'Rourke in there and wins a powerful header in there. Yeah, and, and looks straight away like he has just slipped on exactly where where sort of Brian Lynch had went in. He's gone into the middle of that midfield and he he looks to have a little bit about him. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. um, he's he's springing on his toes there anyway, uh, and he looks to have a little bit about him. With a great ball, That's a great long ball. Oh, what a fantastic ball! Great ball and Owen Burke done really well just to start to roll the defender. And he took it on the chest, but luckily enough for the All Black side that it did it bounced off him there. So. Yeah, fantastic ball put in by Brian Min uh, Minogue that time, wasn't it? Yeah, so he's, had a, he's um, had a really good game in the yeah, midfield. So he, like earlier on, we talked about he just done every, he does everything simple. Yeah, yeah, he's he's keeping nice and simple, and um, he's their captain as well. So he, yeah. he's leading by example there today. And that's that's what you want, isn't it? A little bit of experience in the middle there. He sort of calm head on shoulders and definitely, yeah. Just at the hour mark now, Nicky, it's been a great hour of football. A big thirty minutes to go and. Both teams out there be trying to like, like to think that if they can score the next one, it'll be the winner. But I'm sure Shelburne have probably thought that the three times they went in the lead, that that's the, the lead for them, you know what I mean? And yeah, definitely. Great testament to the All Blacks players that haven't dropped their head once, you know what I mean? And even even that time when there was a little bit of an argument over whose throw it should have been when Shelburne scored, they didn't. the players didn't argue. It was not on it, straight down down the pitch and scored. And I suppose left the argument to the coaches on the sideline. You know, you yeah, know what definitely. I mean? The lads on the line, um, they, they were still arguing when yeah, All Blacks when the scored. scored yeah. So um, <laughs> a testament to the players. They, yeah. they obviously weren't, um, weren't getting involved in that. They have their job to do. And in fairness to All Blacks, they've, they've stuck to their system. They've stuck with three yeah, five two. They They're playing football. It's um, <coughs> Shelburne have um, tipped and changed systems, yeah. and and they're still in the game. So it's um, fair play to both teams. Yeah, it's, teams. It's been a great cup final so far, and it's like you said, lads there from the All Blacks have stuck to it. And look, they're they're used to the backs of the wall. Probably I think they, at one stage last week to the balls in the in the league game, they found themselves three one down and to come back and win that. To come so back and win it. I think it was six four to win it in the end. Yeah, it's, so so it's not the first six, time. Three up even at one stage, and yeah. balls got a. A goal back, yeah. and I think both had a couple of chances to even make it six at all. So, yeah. Um, yeah so it's a testament to them. Obviously, they, they, they never, never started to say a die attitude, but an opportunity here on the edge of the box, and so big shout for handball there. But I think it did come up off his chest. I don't think there was any handball in that. But Shelburne starting to put a little bit of pressure on the All Blacks again, trying to create a few chances and three sets of fresh legs now on the pitch too will make a big difference for him. And there's yeah. one of them, the number eight, and a lovely ball inside. George Brian Minogue. 
I like to look at that Jamie O'Rourke since he's come in there. Yeah. He just he seems um, comfortable there. Um, yeah, and he, he looks and to want to get on the ball. Yeah, he's he definitely he's after calling for passes there the whole way. Yeah, uh, since he's only on the pitch two minutes, but he's um, he's definitely calling for the ball whenever anybody is on it. Yeah, he's showing for it anyway. And I suppose for for the, for that Shelburne team, there not alone is this a cup final, but any of the substitutes coming on or. They're probably going to be looking to create a headache for their manager, as we said. They have the, the league playoff on Wednesday for promotion as well. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and sure they'll have an eye on that to make sure they're in the starting eleven for that too. So yeah, so um, if you look at the obviously they'll want to get up into Division One. Yeah. Um, uh, the higher you, they get up, the better standard of football, better pitches, better That's facilities, it, everything. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm I'm dead sure they'll want to get up. They've had a good few years. They're doing really well in Leinster yeah. a couple of years ago. As you spoke, they've, they're doing really well down there. They have a couple yeah, of promotions. Yeah, a club that's really, um, really, really grown over yeah, a few years. Yeah, like, it's, great, it's great to see as well, Nicky, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like fantastic. A rural club there yeah. out, out in the middle of nowhere, really. Yeah. Um, so it's fantastic to, that they're, um, they're doing well. And they've had a ding-dong battle with Ajax over the last couple yeah. of years with promotions and things like that. So. Yeah, no, it's great to see. It wasn't... We're used, to, I suppose, seeing cup finals being played by the big, I suppose, the so-called bigger clubs in the county. You know what I mean? And it was great. It's great to see that the rural clubs getting the cup finals. Like we had the Billy Brown Cup final here with two rural clubs, with Ballymurn and and Bree and here Bree, last yeah. week. It was and, super. You and know what I mean? And the crowds, phenomenal, uh, phenomenal crowds. Yeah. And even <coughs> we just talked about the so-called big clubs at Albion and Shamrock Rovers here yesterday. And these crowds are double towards yeah. what was here yesterday. Yeah. Do you know. Um, so, um, but uh, look, it's a fantastic crowd. Yeah, absolutely. So it's super to see. It's great to see the local soccer being supported at such a great level. And look, as we said, it's not every it's not every year. There's probably some of these lads on the pitch today might be playing another cup final ever again. Nick, you know what I mean? So you just make the most of them when you can and ensure the excitement around, I suppose, the local areas all week has been great and the build up to it. And Definitely. They don't come around every year. No, they surely so, don't. And enjoy them when they do. Game is quieting down just a little bit at the moment, a little bit of a stem, but as we said, that Shelburne looking to build, but in fairness to him, Kyle Rankin on absolutely super there to win that. Ball into the feet of Darren Naughton. He's going to look to get it out wide to that man, Shane Goff again. Plays the ball down toward it, tried to return it to Darren, but that one come off. I think the two Goff brothers have been a little bit quieter at the start of this second half, I think. Definitely. Shelburne have done sort of well to... To sort of stop them, I think they've stopped that ball getting out wide, and I think that's probably a lot to do with maybe Shelburne having the three men in the middle of midfield now. The lads in there for All Blacks don't have as much time just to get no. the head up and, and pick those passes out. Shelburne are just nullifying um, what uh, All Blacks were doing in the first half. Kyle Rankin has gone down, I think he's looking for a bit of treatment there. But, um, a bit of cramp, is it? So, uh, you'd be hoping so. Yeah. In a game with a young guy, they're, they're just making it. Oh, is that the shin guards are off. I thought he twisted his ankle a second ago there, but no, it looks like he's days his run, yeah. which is unfortunate. Yeah, because he's done really well in there too, haven't he? But so I'll try to get a quick look at the number on the back of the jersey. It's going to come in. It's going to be number 18 to come in. So it looks like it's going to be, if we're going by the numbers on the oak, it's going to be John Maguire to come in. No. Yeah. Yeah. Being and called Doyle, so I'd imagine it's probably Mark Doyle coming in. Then maybe is it more or less Mark? Yeah. yeah. So I don't, um, <laughs> I don't recognise him to yeah. be honest. So uh, yeah, it looks like Mark. So I Adam, I think uh, Mark has gone straight up front, and it looked like um, they were telling Adam Devricks to drop into midfield. Yeah. So um, a small bit of a, a tactical switch around, maybe. Yeah, yeah Mark, Mark Doyle uh, to come in and to replace Kyle Rankin. So. Kyle had a good game, in fairness to him. Look, he's probably unfortunate there. Maybe he picked up a bit of a knock and forced out. But as you said, these things happen, and that's the whole idea of a squad. It's never your team that'll win; it's your squad that wins you a cup final, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. And um, in fairness to him, he, he put himself around the park there for. Yeah, he did. Um, uh, he covered every blade when he was yeah. in. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, he'll, be, he'll be quite happy, and his management will be quite happy with the shift that he put in there as well, won't it? Cause yeah. But look, as you said, he's. He's you know, all action. Yeah, young chap. He absolutely. There, yeah. He was at a hundred percent the whole game for just to him. So. Hopefully, if it is an injury, he's picked up there. He can bounce back from it pretty quick, too. He's a young lad, so... Opportunity here down the left-hand side. Good ball across, but in fairness, keeper's quick off his line. Luke Connor takes the pressure off his team again, and Shelburne looking to get up the pitch quick now, and keeper looking to release him. That is a good kick down the right-hand side. Looking to pick out number seven, Owen Kelly. The ball does go that far, and Owen does well to keep it in on the right-hand side. And he is travelling. Darren Norton tried to get across to him, but he couldn't risk a tackle. He cuts it back. Oh, oh, and it was number 12, Brian Minogue, even late. And that one is just, just over the crossbar. 
Great bit of play there by Owen. Great, great bit of play by Owen that time. Yeah. Um, he really opened up his legs and um, he outpaced Darren Nocton that time. And in fairness to him, a lot of the times you'll see somebody coming in at that angle and they'll yeah. just whip it. But he got his head up, yeah. picked out Brian, and I'm sure Brian um, and Oga will be a little bit disappointed. Yeah, not to Kind of like Darren Nocton's yeah. um, chance in the first half. Yeah. But um, no, um, it was a fantastic bit of play, and there yeah. it was again that counter attack. Yeah. And in fairness to Darren Not, I think he was very smart to pull out of the tackle because he went over to try cut out. The, and I think if he had a went for it, he would have definitely not have got there and he could have seen himself in the book. But yeah. in fairness, he, he done well just to sort of cut back in and try to go towards a different man. But number 15, there I see Patrick Boland trying to get that ball into the box, but didn't quite come off. And straight away, no no delay with Owen Cummins getting his team out and ball out to the left footed that more. Looking to go long down oh. line towards Shane Cassidy. Bit of a slip there, now an opportunity. If they can get their heads up, they're 4v3. Ball is cut back. Oh, Ooh. a great block there, and a clear and kick. But an opportunity there for the All Blacks. A fantastic um, opportunity. Um, number Kevin Collins um, clashed in yeah. uh, there with uh, with um, the Barnchev and another counter attack from Shelburne. This time, he's oh, offside. He's offside. Yeah. Just but, um, Owen Burke just didn't couldn't hold the run there. I think he was looking for it to be played a little bit earlier, but he tried to bend the run, but he did stray just a couple of yards offside. But game starting to open up a little bit again. Nicky. Yeah, I think that was a fantastic block by um, Patrick Lynch that time yep. um, from Shane Cassidy because he really, really caught it yep. and then ended up running into the referee Darren Ennis. He got a little bit too close, <laughs> so he blocked him when he was yep. going to get his second touch on it. But a uh, fantastic block there with, yep, because that, that ball was travelling. It was. I don't think um, a little mishap. Uh, yeah. That's the, and that's, that's all it could take to be the winner of this game. And he gets a little yep. bit of a slip. Or, oh. But the game definitely starting to open up again. Chances starting to come. Lovely football. Oh. And yet again, Mark it's another Dyle. really good tackle. And that he one's going to go for the corner. He fooled himself. And Darren Ennis has actually overruled his linesman there. And if <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, fairness, I thought it was strange. I thought it was a corner all day yeah. long. Now, from where we are, because in fairness, um, it was it was number it was number eighteen. There, Mark Doyle that came in, looked across it, yeah. and he actually kicked it across. But the ball went straight yeah. out, so it definitely had to come off. I thought it would have come off the defender, but look, how never it's done. But now, and it's done and dusted. Maybe Darren felt left out. Yeah, the game hasn't involved <laughs> him yet yeah. so far. So, um, in fairness, there ha in fairness, there hasn't been a dirty challenge in the no, game. There's has been, there? there's been nothing for him. No. So. I'm sure Darren is probably ha quite happy that he hasn't had to do too much, you know what I mean? Not, not There hasn't been too many hard decisions he's had to make. No, it's no. been very little. It's been very, very good and open and honest yeah. so far. And the game has so. flowed quite well. Like There hasn't even been a massive amount of freeze, do you know what I mean? No. Maybe as, as lads get maybe tired towards the end of the game, you might see a little bit more of it, but Darren Norton does well to get up and win that header there, and it was Aaron Goff trying to get in and get it, but it does find its way to Owen Kelly, but Owen Kelly tries to go inside, and it's cut out there by Peter Goldsmith. Yeah, this um the five inch in midfield in Shelburne is really really after hampering um All Blacks yeah. um and they're struggling to um to get control of the game now again um it's turned into a real fifty fifty battle in there yeah where it has, as you said for the majority of the first half All Blacks were dominating that that central area surely were the surely were they were they were dominating they had a lot of time on the ball to get the head up and and find I suppose the two Goff brothers out wide and. Was you can, you can look at it there, and it's a good tactical move from Shelburne to, to stem that by putting that extra man in there. As we said, it does maybe leave it a little bit more hard work for Owen Burke up top, but he he's still caused trouble so far. Ah, he's doing his job. He's doing his job. That's a lovely ball over the Great top ball. And for the substitution. Number fifteen, Patrick Boland to go on the end oh. of. Keeper comes out and does just enough to block that one down. Jesus, Owen, he had um, I'd say he had his management heart in him out there because yeah. he came and stopped and came again and done well when he. He done just enough, up, didn't just he? Done just done to enough, stand yeah. him up and to stop that one. But yeah, a great tackle by Darren. Just looking at the just looking at the Shelburne team again here now, and in fairness to him, the, since number fifteen Patrick Boland has come in, he's really offering a great outlet to the team on that left hand side. And Owen Kelly now is starting to get out really wide on the right hand side, so yeah, they're, they're really getting up now and supporting Owen Burke. And we were a little bit worried, I suppose, what sort of support he was going to get with from the five. But in fairness to him, Shelburne have grown right back into this t into this game again. Definitely, um, and uh, we've mentioned the Billy Brown a couple of weeks ago. The the brief subs changed the game there. Yesterday, Shamrock Rovers subs changed the game. Luke Boxwell came on, scored, um, created one, and um, scored two. So, um, so yeah, it's fantastic. So it is. The subs are obviously playing a big part in in all the cup finals. 
I know it's, look, it's great to see and as we've said a couple of times it's a squad game Nicky isn't it yeah. like, you can have an amazing start at 11 but if you don't have lads come off the bench there's always going to be lads get tired or injured no it's not worth anything to you you need the lads so and they need to buy in it you can only start 11 uh, any given Sunday so um, so um, you need the lads to buy into it exactly, so. exactly. an opportunity here now though for, for um, all the blacks to get the ball in the backs looks like it's number 3 dot more the left for the player going to come across and get this one in and send all their big lads forward so it's a little bit central. It's a hard one to do, isn't it? Yeah, so you, you sort just have to have go with a diagonal ball and hope you can get something. But yeah, we've got a corner so out of that. We got a corner, so it's, that's kind of the best they can hope for, yeah. really. And yeah, it's, it's a tough such ball a, to such deliver. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So uh, I suppose that's what we were expecting. We were we were expecting uh, Shane Cassidy to do that with the last ball. Yeah, he just drilled it straight at the goal. So, so this one was a little further yeah, out. Yeah, just so. a little. Yeah. It'll be a good opportunity now for the left footed player to come across and swing this one in. So it'll be riding on top of the keeper. You'd imagine and the All Blacks really alive good run or all arrive late ball into the front post done well to get it but it falls just to number nine but the danger's oh. not gone yes they're not with the bicycle kick oh, oh no but it's gone wide but <laughs> in fairness there you can see that was obviously work from the training ground all the all backs like gathered right outside the box and arrived late but they all arrived and then they left two hanging on the box yeah. so um shane cassidy and um, adam devericks just stood yeah. so the rest of the boys all ran so it left the two of them free but obviously yeah. they've they've tried to work on that um down in All Blacks uh, over maybe over the year or over the week. Yeah. Good clearing kick against the wind from the goalkeeper. Substitute number eight again, who was doing really well, Jamie O'Rourke. Shelburne looking to get forward again, but that man Darren Norton just gets in and cuts it out and won himself a throw there. So, fairness to all the players out there putting in a savage effort at the moment. And look, it's a warm day, so it's not going to be easy on the legs. and no, the sun is coming out and a um, yeah. little bit of a lull in the game at the minute. Yeah. Um, but I think it's to be expected it's, yeah, been done yeah, it's a hell for letter <laughs> there for the first hour or more. Yeah. Um, and, and don't forget, if we're at the at the end of a long, long season yeah, as well. Exactly, and yeah. um, The first full season since COVID as well. So a lot of these lads haven't played a full, a full year in a couple of years. Exactly, you know, yeah. it's been bit, bits and pieces. So. Exactly. It's fantastic to get back down here, isn't yeah, it? After super COVID, to have the cup you know, and, back to exactly and, and having crowds in at games yeah, and things like that. Super so. there's, there's nothing better, you know what I mean? And your these lads are here playing in front of their friends and family. And as we said, you don't get to too many cup finals, so they'll be looking to relish the experience. And so. a big 15 minutes to go here now, Nicky. 15 minutes of normal time here, and as we know, if, there, if there's no winner between now and then, we'll be going into extra time and penalties. And right. I don't think any team wants to lose an extra time or penalties, so no, it'll we'll, be going all out. But as we said, it Darren Norton gets a strike away, but that one's just going to go harmlessly wide and. Been fairly even for the last couple of minutes. There's no one really so on top. I, I think, think they're after winning a corner out of that yeah, one. But a, um, I didn't yeah. see the flick, but obviously Darren and the linesman did. But All Blacks are starting to just put a little bit of pressure on Shelburne again. Yeah, they are. They're putting a little bit of pressure. But if you ask me to pick a winner now, the second I couldn't tell you. No. Um, it's no. just it's been one of them games. So um, uh, it's been really enjoyable, and they're on another set piece now. So ball into the middle. Ernest, no, that number five again, Padraig Lynch winning another header. But the danger's not gone. Darren oh. Norton hooks it back towards the goal, and Luke Connor's just in the right place and made that save. Look, look probably easier than it was, but good set of hands and yep. takes the pressure off and straight away gets the ball long down towards Owen Burke. But it's that man again there in doing the work, sitting in there. Peter Goldsmith, great engine in there. He's got up and down the pitch all day for the All Blacks. Yeah, he's done really well in there. He's um, he's picking up a lot of ball and. Um, He's just been very, very steady. He's held yeah. that. He's held that kind of. The, they call it the number six position yeah. now, isn't it? That holding yeah. role, and he's that, that hold and he roll just sat in there for the for the for the game, and he's done really, really well. He's been consistent there. In, in fairness, he's given great protection to his back three. Definitely, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. He's just let the other two guys get out, gallop up and down the oh, pitch. Oh, missed header! Opportunity. A missed header, ball over the top. It's 15. Oh, oh and he's just lifted it over the bar. The chance for Patrick Ball and the substitute so. to potentially win it for his team, and just lifted that one. I think the keeper done really well, Nicky. I actually thought it was gone in from the angle we were standing at. I thought it was yeah. gone in, but the defender just missed time the header, and he was through one on one. Chose to go over and oh. There's only a couple of inches no. in it. In fairness, so. the, the keeper done very well to come out and start to force him into a decision, didn't he? And maybe yeah. those times there, if he, he had it took his time, he probably could have went around the keepers. The, the keeper committed to a big jump, you know what I mean? And but look, there is chances starting to come again. And just a little bit of a missed time header that time. I think it was by Connor Breen. Just was misread the ball, and that's all it takes sometimes. As you said, Nicky, a small mistake now could lead to the winner. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it, the, the time is running out to get it back. Um, if you do concede now, yeah. but um. 
Yeah, um, a mistime header, but it, and as we said, a lot of Shelburne's attacks are coming in uh, around the pocket at the yeah. back of the, the two centre halves. Yeah. Uh, this time it was on Danny Boland's side. The la last two or three occasions it's been on Owen Kelly's side. So yeah, um, it, yeah. so th that is the, the, the space where they have to try and yeah. to try hit them in that gap. Hit in that. And every yeah. time they do, they seem to be able to, to create something. So... Um, yeah, another another set piece here to come now, and the last couple of set pieces, I think the, the ball just hasn't quite been right, has it? It's been either hanging in the air or low, so yeah. if they can, because there's plenty of big lads in there, if you get that delivery a little bit flatter maybe, and with some pace on it, no. definitely have the lads in there available, but... You know yourself, if you're absolutely zipping something, like Shane Cassidy's free, yeah. so much harder to, to handle. If you put a loft and floaty ball there... Um, it's a defender's ball. He can come all day and either headers or yeah, our, our keeper come and take Shelb it. Shelburne's number three just gone down there in the area. Kevin Collins and he's looking he to come yeah, off. Yeah, I think he's looking to come off. He's given the he's given the nod to the sideline to say he's done. It's an awful time as well to yeah. make a sub. They're defending a the yeah. corner. Um, i if I was the manager, I'd tell him to stand in there for a couple of minutes. He knows yeah. his job. Yeah. Um, I'd be. But uh, f in, in fairness, uh, f fair juice to the fair juice so. to the to the player himself though, because a lot of lads, Nicky, could pick up an injury. I don't want to come off in a cup final. Maybe play with an injury and could cost a mistake there if he can't go to the ball properly. But yeah, looks like it's going to be number fourteen to come in. Is Sean Morn. Sean Morn. Yeah. So. Another another um, young another young player as well there. Yeah, it definitely looks a very young lad. So good, a good mixture by the looks. Of, like both squads seem to have a good mixture of sort of youth and experience there, Nicky. And I think you see that yeah. a lot, especially in the in the in the, in the football league. You know what I mean? Definitely, so yeah. He'll be, he'll be so. look. He'll be delighted. I'm sure there. He's getting his opportunity so. to come in now. Uh, number three, Kevin Collins uh, came off, and uh, it looks like he's going to be replaced by Sean Moore. Yeah, Sean's gone right in onto the post. So. Um, I suppose it's not too hard to pick up that job. No, exactly. But as you said, it's, it's a tough time to come into a game, Nicky. Last 10 minutes, it'll take a couple of minutes to get into it, maybe. Definitely. It's uh, a good ball. It's a much better ball into the box. And number, the Jamie substitute number eight, Jamie O'Rourke in there. But the trouble's not completely gone yet. Ball's still here in the box. All Blacks, but in fairness, do really, really well to get that clear now. And a lovely first touch bounce pass. Oh, great ball. A, a super ball all the way up to number nine on Burke. Dot Moore comes across, doesn't get there, ball oh. across. He just dragged that one by, just couldn't find the finish like he did with the, with the <laughs> one at the start of the second half there. And That was a fantastic pass by Jamie Barron coming out there with the outside of his foot that time. Yeah. And in fairness to Owen Burke, he's, uh, he's done fantastic up there on his yeah. own. That lone, lone striker there is a, is a very, very tough job. So And Owen Cummins in the goal there, he's done well. He, he's had a lot of one-on-ones today yeah, and he stood me. up on yeah. every occasion. Yeah, he doesn't look the most orthodox, but he stood up on every occasion and made made the striker make a call yeah. instead of yeah, it's very making easy it to come easy out and sell yourself, isn't it? Yes, Just maybe yeah. dive at the feet yeah. and that'll nip around you. But in fairness, oh. he's delayed that sort of movement as much as he could, and as you said, forced the attackers into make their decisions and make yeah. them make them miss the shot more than him save it. Even. But yeah. in fairness, so. it was another good run in behind by Owen Burke. He's as you said, he's done a great job up there on his own in the second half. And <laughs> yeah, so it's a very untangled job. Looking, yeah, Shelburne's still looking to create plenty of opportunities anyway. Both teams still look dangerous. Yeah, we're just <laughs> just under in, into the last ten minutes here now, and y y you'd like to think, Nicky, if anyone could nip a goal, you know, at the end of it, it will be the winner. But as we've seen, anytime Shelburne have scored one, sort of the All Blacks, as we said, have bounced back nearly within a couple of minutes. But as you said, if someone scores now, you just don't have that time then towards the end, do you? No, no, no. That uh, the time becomes a little bit more panicky. Yeah, it becomes a little bit more fractured, and um, it's uh, it's that little bit tougher. But I see, I see Paul Murphy going through a bit of a rigorous um, warm up, so yeah. it looks like All Blacks could be looking to bring on Paul. He's Fairness, um, a, a he good would player to bring in, especially if this if this is maybe potentially going to go as it looks at the moment. No, no winner yet, so it could easily be going into extra time. So yeah, definitely. And look at with his vast experience, you're you're not yeah. going to be bringing on anybody in Wexford is no. not going to be bringing on the likes of that um, no. around today. Um, he's a fantastic player. A lovely ball up again as far as Owen Burke, oh. but in fairness, that time the defender does really well to come across. But danger not gone yet. But that Moore gets his left foot to that one into the middle. Darren Norton looks to get up and win it, but that's an absolutely powerful header by Barry Kelly. Flick forward and looking for Owen Burke to run again. But <coughs> game becoming a little bit more open, Nicky, isn't it? It's a little bit more stretched at times now. Probably lads' legs are getting a little bit weary and tired. They probably can't get up and down the pitch as much either, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And it's coming kind of like um, yesterday. Oh, great ball through. He's offside. 
Yeah, the, um, I, I thought he was. I thought he'd gone a little bit early. In fairness, the linesman had the flag up straight away. Yeah, um, as I was just saying, it's coming a little bit like yesterday. The crowd really got um, going yesterday in the last 10 minutes. Yeah. And it built for a right atmosphere. And it, it feels like the crowd are getting a little bit tension now yeah. in him. And uh, they're shouting and calling for every little decision. It, so. I, I suppose they all know the next goal is more realistically probably going to be the winner. And as we said, an well opportunity be. here down the oh. right-hand side. Owen Kelly. Thinks the ball towards to the back post, Owen Burke. He does well to not it back in, but man again, Peter Goldsman in there to mop it up. And that's it. That's it. Two good honest challenges there in fairness, Darren Norton there and the substitute that came in, Jamie O'Rourke. So in fairness, he's done very well since he's come in Nicky Young. Jamie O'Rourke has come into the middle of that midfield and he's has done got quite himself well. about. Yeah, d he's definitely done quite well. Um but I, I can't believe that all blacks are allowing on Kelly have so much space over on that side. Yeah. Because he really looks dangerous every every opportunity he gets. Going to be now for Aaron Goff. Lovely flick outside, and Brother Shane was looking to get on the end of it. Trouble not gone. Good feed again by Cassidy. Oh. Gets the strike away towards the far post. That one has just gone wide to the left. I think the keeper was just getting across to it, Nicky, but he probably just haven't strike. covered. But it was a scramble. If you look at that, that's impossible to look at because there is no backlift. Look, he has no backlift. Yeah. Bang. That's a great, it's it's a great strike, and the keeper was, keeper was scrambling, Nicky, wasn't he? I think he was worried about it. Yeah, he looked sharp. Uh, Shane Cassidy as you said he, there was so. no backlift there was no big wind up to no. it you couldn't tell he was going to hit it was just no, a snap it was just a snapshot yeah. bang so ball goes long Darren Norton tries to get up and win that one Peter Goldsmith now and Darren again <coughs> Ernest has been a great battle between both sets of sides since the went started the five each in the midfield yeah. it's been a good battle in the middle there as we mentioned a couple of times the All Blacks haven't had the time that they had in the first half on the ball but Shelburne's I suppose tactical changes have worked out well for him and they've got a better control but saying that the Shelburne keeper gives the ball away there and yeah, uh, it's the last thing you want to be doing coming into the last five, five, six minutes of the cup final is giving away cheap ball. Yeah. Cheap ball so uh, you want to be holding on to her like it's your girlfriend. Yes, <laughs> hold on to her like it's something you don't want to give away anyway. <laughs> yeah, a long ball through now. And the Shelburne lads were shouting for a bit of an offside there, but no flag. So. And again, it's that man for Shelburne on the right hand side, Owen Kelly, was coming short to collect that ball. He's had a great game, Nicky. Yeah, he, uh, he's he's. Um, everything he's done, he's done well. Yeah. Do you know, he's been out of the game for periods where the ball hasn't gone over to yeah. him. But any time it's been over there, he's done really well. Yeah. And, and when he opens up them legs, he's hard to catch. Yeah, he's it? definitely hard to catch. Yeah, he's a, he's so. a quick lad. And sometimes you look at the big, tall, I suppose, rangy, lanky strikers, <laughs> as they're called. Sometimes they're wingers. You don't expect the silky footwork and pace out of him. But no. he has it all there, in fairness to him. And definitely has. Um, he's, he's coming into the last five minutes of the game now. And... One team can manage to maybe create a clear-cut chance, could find ourselves with a winner. And that ball tried to go down the left-hand side, and in fairness, number four for Shelburne probably could have let it run, but didn't want to take the risk, Patrick Barron, and just turned around and hoofed it over the sideline to take the pressure off his team. And safety first. Well, that's it. And it's now safety first. This period. You mentioned Paul Murphy there was getting wound up, but he's just looking down, he's still going through a stretching routine down there, so... Yeah, he's down at the very bottom of the corner flag down there, so... He's, um, he's down there and he's probably visualising scoring, scoring the winner himself. So, Well, at his age and his yeah. <laughs> injury profile, like, he it. needs a longer warm-up than most. <laughs> <laughs> but opportunity for Shelburne to break here, tries to go at the outside of the right boot, but it's that man putting in a great shift in the middle for the All-Blacks getting Darren Norton, but that ball only goes as far as number 13, Jess Quigley, who sprays a, hum a brilliant ball out wide to Owen Kelly. Owen Kelly with the opportunity to get the ball in the box. It does go in there, but... Peter Goldsmith gets a good clear and header, but the danger's not gone, and the ball finds its way back out to the right hand side again. It's time Owen Kelly chooses to come in. Oh, what a ball! What a ball! Oh, the oh. offside flag. The offside flag was up. He did put it in the net, but the whistle had gone well before it. But an absolutely super there. Owen Kelly chose to come cut back in that side, and, and, and he used his left foot that yeah. time. So um, I, I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't have seen much of either of these two teams over the last few years, but I've been really, really impressed. With the standard um, of both of them, man. That's been honest now. Um, yeah, it's been um, a really good. It's, it's been, been a really even game of football. Yeah, do you know what you I mean? Know, and There's another another strong tackle. As we we said a couple of times, there hasn't been a dirty challenge in the whole game. No, no, no. It's yeah. that was another fair uh, challenge. Yeah. It's a free kick, but there was yeah. no malice in it. But it's a but uh, as I was saying, some of the touches, some of the crossfield passes. Um, it's been a really, really high high yeah, standard. High standard um, yeah. 
I, I've been be, very be, impressed with be it. Funny to see if we'll see Shane Cassidy make his way out for this one. It is looks like we're going to be him and straight away the keeper's going to be having the keeper's definitely going to be thinking that there is this one coming at me again. And well, and he it, should be. Yeah, he should be thinking anyway. And he should be a little bit. In fairness, so. if I, and in fairness, if I was Shane Cassidy the way I hit the first one, it'd be definitely something I'd be trying to be getting it towards the goal, and all it takes is maybe someone to flick it or a spill. You know what I mean? And he, follow if, it in. If he slaps it out, it's up to your centre forward. Up to yeah. well, he is the centre forward, but it's up to whoever's chasing in to to react quickest to it. Yeah. So. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. He has the Ronaldo-like stance there yeah. over there. Bit of a tighter angle this one, but uh, yeah, closer in this time. Closer in yeah. is right. So uh, just having a look. The keeper's a little bit more on his toes this time. He does strike. Hey, it. Go for Great it. Throw, another good strike, and the keeper done well to get down to his right hand side. Trouble knock on though. Ball straight back out to him. Keeper done well there. I think Nicky. Yeah, he. I was looking at him there. He was on his toes. He was actually preparing for it that time, and. Um, yeah, a good save. He slapped it out away from Balling. the danger, so yeah. and that's what you need to do. Right. Had a quick look at the replay. Yeah, it was a good strike into the near post again, and it was around the outside of the wall. It looked like, and in fairness, the keeper done well. He got around. He got across quick and just sort of set a safe hands behind it and got his body yeah. behind it. So, and as I said, he pushed it away from the goal more yeah, than slapping exactly, it back yeah. out. So, um, into the final. It's coming into the final two minutes now, Nicky. Two minutes to go here in the Wexford Football League Neil O'Sullivan Cup final. If you're only joining us, it is all blacks in Shelburne, three all at the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the youth final was the same yesterday. It was evenly contested. It was a draw at this stage, and yeah. uh, Shamrock Rovers scored two goals in injury time. Yeah. So who knows what way it's going to go? Yeah. Um, it'd be very, very hard um, for either of these two teams to lose it to now in the last yeah, couple of minutes. Because yeah. um, uh, the two of them have put in great shifts, in fairness to them. Offside, offside flag is up there, yeah, in fairness. I, I thought to myself, Shane Cassidy would come back from an offside position to try challenge for it, so... Yeah. As you said, it'd be, be a horrible time for either team to lose it, but I'm sure either of these teams would be happy to take a, take a winner. So, yeah, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure. So, um... And sure, look... <coughs> isn't it, um... Isn't it great that we've had such an even game? That's it, Man, it's still, we can't call it either way. No, exactly, um, as you with 60 seconds and... I know, I know. We won't be picking the official man of the match, Nicky. But if you were to pick a man of the match right now, who would who would be your man of the match? Um, well, I've really liked Don Kelly, um, and Shelburne. As I said, he had those periods of the game where he's been in and out of it, but everything he's done, he's done really well. Yeah. Um, also their centre half, um, has done really Patrick well. Lynch, is it? Yeah, Patrick yeah. Lynch has done really well. Yeah. And then off of um, oh. oh. I suppose the man that was just about to go on the end of that one surely worth to mention is he Shane I was Cassidy. just about to say Shane Cassidy and Darren Nocton has covered Darren every Nocton, ground yeah. so for me they, they being the four I, I'd yeah. find it hard to it's call hard to any one, any yeah. one but just yeah. for me I thought they've done done really well yeah, so I think, um, I think it'll come down I think uh, the person who is picking the man of the match will be waiting to see what maybe the winning side is maybe sometimes it's not too often you see a man of the match from the, los from the losers but Oh. Know, whoever whoever is t picking it, Nicky, won't have an easy job. No, definitely not, and that's why I pick four of them. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I think you see in a cup final you'll have one stand out performer, but not today. But no, not over here. An opportunity. Oh. oh. Shelburne are going mad. There was a little bit of unsporting behaviour there. Darren Ennis. Yeah. Um, didn't stop the game um, yeah. when a lad was down injured. So Shelburne are not happy. I suppose the rule is there. It's only a stop for a head injury now, isn't it? And you put the ball out of play if you want it stopped. So yeah. I suppose All Blacks, in, by the rules of the game, were in their right to carry on. Do you know what I mean? And, and the dying embers of a game, I think they're going to take the opportunity. I think it was the yeah, substitute so Mark Doyle there who had the opportunity. But yeah, so just um, got across it, and he just got across the ball. He cut across it, and it was for Shelburne side, thankfully. And yeah, so I look at maybe a little bit unsporting, but yeah. look at it. Um, it's a cup final. Exactly. Tensions are high. Yeah. Um, he's he's back up now. Anyway, we just spoke about him because he's had a really good game. Um, Patrick Lynch, Patrick he's, Lynch he's yeah, a bit, small bit yeah. of cramp there. So he's had his hands full. Yeah, he uh, sure he Shane has. Cassidy and Adam uh, Devricks for most of the game were were lighting and quick up there. So he's been covering a lot of ground. We are in the injury time here now. The end of this Elo Sullivan Cup final. So it'll be whatever Darren Ennis chooses. Dad, we didn't have much in at a time in the first half, and I don't. We haven't had too many stoppages apart from the substitutes here in the second half and. Unless someone can find a winner here at the end, and that is a lovely ball over to Cassidy. Big shout for handball, but I don't think it was a, an on purpose handball. And Shelburne no. have an opportunity to come away with it and clear their lines, but ball only goes as far as Dar that man, Darren Naughton. Tough tackle in there, and Dot Moore comes through. Left footed. 
Right now, it looks like Nicky, we could be going to extra time here. And isn't, isn't junior football, Nicky, it's 10 minutes either way? 10 minutes either way. Um, and then look at both teams are kind of looking tired, aren't they? Yeah, so, yeah, as we said. Um, I think they've accepted pitch. it now, really, that they look like they're going to go to extra time. I think they'll be quite happy so. to get in and just take a couple of minutes. But in fairness, no. to, in fairness to number nine, Shane <laughs> Cassidy, Shane, he's he, he hasn't running. accepted it. No, so. He hasn't given up, in fairness. He's been full of running up there for his team. And if we like the Billy Brown Cup final last week, went to extra time as well after a good game of football. And... Last week, I suppose Bree managed to get the penalty in extra time and win it. So, and yeah, we, we were all set here, I suppose, for a get for a penalty shootout. But they had other things on their mind. But it was a penalty shootout. It becomes a lottery at that stage. M team would, I think, much rather lose it to an actual goal. And there is the final whistle here at Furry Carrick Park in the Wexford Football League Neil O'Sullivan Cup final. It is All Blacks three, Shelburne three, and we will go at extra time and penalties if needed. So. I think they, they will give the teams just a couple of minutes. So we'll be back, Nicky, in a couple of minutes for extra time here at Furry Carrick Park. Yep, no problem at all.
everybody, welcome back here to Furry Carrick Park. It looks like we're just having a, a coin toss down in the middle to see what way the teams are going to shoot in this first half of extra time. If you are just tuning in, it is the Wexford Football League Neil O'Sullivan Cup Final. After 90 minutes of normal time, it was the All Blacks SC3, Shelburne United 3. So we will now have 10 minutes either way of extra time. And if nobody can find a winner during that, we will go to a penalty shootout. So, Nicky, a big 20 minutes of football to come. Massive 20 minutes for both teams. Um, to put... Um but in fairness to both clubs, they put massive effort into the whole season. And um, for it to come down well, I know Shelburne have a playoff game in during the week, but um, it's right down to the last 20 minutes um, for their cup final to, to top it off. Yeah, I think was there a substitute made for All Blacks there? That yeah, number 15, it uh, looked like Brad. Brad and, and we'll try to have a quick look and let you know who came off there. No, no, we weren't paying attention to see who was coming off. I think he, I don't, I don't think he ever, he never came off. If you know what I mean, he just didn't no, come back he, out for yeah. the second half. But we'll, we'll have a look and see where, who's missing now in a minute. But straight away, and chance for All Blacks, they're going to create a mm -hmm. corner for themselves. And it actually it looked like Aaron, Aaron Goff has gone, number eleven. Yeah, that's looks exactly like who so. it is. Yeah, one, one of the brothers is gone, so it is Aaron Goff. So I'd imagine Brad Coolhop is just going to go straight out to that left hand side. And yeah. him, but look, he had a very good game too, Nicky, didn't he? Aaron, uh, he definitely, he, he had a great first half. In yeah. fairness to him. Um, Shelburne kind of nullified him in the second half, but he, he definitely had a great first. Great ball. The oh. corner is in. The keeper gets two fists for it, but only goes up in the air. The danger's not quite gone yet. Ball out as far as Peter Goldsmith. He's able to get it back as far as his own player. And That's fairness Brad, to, the new sub coming in. Yeah, in fairness to Shelburne, Shelburne got out there really quick and, and, and closed that down. But Yeah, they, they did close it down, and they've done that. They've done that very, very well Especially in the second, in the half. second half. Yeah. Um, they've, they've probably been the most aggressive um, in the closing down and and um, Paddy Barden delivered a, a long yeah. a long ball in there that time fairly well dealt with by Gary Moore Early an, an early silence of nervousness around for Gary Park here during the first that coming towards the end of normal time was a, a lot of noise and I think everyone started a little bit nervous now but oh. that's a great left footed ball in the keeper comes for it doesn't get to it and takes out his own man oh darn oh. well it's a head injury this time it is a head injury and in fairness so. in fairness it was a cracking strike it did go to the back of net I think it was it was it their captain Brian Minogue caught that sweetly there but I think the keeper come out for that and we can have a quick look at it here Nicky if you yeah, want to in fairness to it was a beautiful deliver ball in with the left and the keeper came and out his own man, didn't he? And yeah, he definitely fairness, took out his own I think man. Ev everyone did stop Nicky, didn't they? But your man, he did finish it well. Yeah, it was it was a fantastic finish. Yeah. I can see here the Shelburne lads are giving out because they had a lad down injured a few minutes before. Yeah, I suppose the difference and, is um, one was a leg and one's a head, isn't it? And that's that's it. It's the letter of the law, isn't yeah. it? So um, I see Garrett Larkin down there. Uh, Garrett was on the first week's third youth team. Yeah. Down here, he said it himself. I spotted, bumped into him so. as he was coming in, and I said, "Garrett, how does it feel to be home?" I said to him, and he goes, <laughs> "He goes, well, this is he said it's a hell of a lot easier coming in to do it as a linesman as he has it is to do it as a player." He said, "I won't have as many minutes in my legs." <laughs> <laughs> well, well I'm, if I was a betting man, I'd say he was probably the first Wexford Juice player to be booked. Be I'd say if you were to check it out, I, I wouldn't be surprised, and I wouldn't say he'd be too far off. Nicky probably having the most amount of yellow cards no, either. But no, no, look, in, in fairness, no. it's great to see lads there who played soccer, Nicky, at such a massive high level, right? So he knows the game inside out. A lot of respect for the game, and to, to now see him moving into the other side of the game, the officiating side of it, is super to see. There's probably not there's probably not enough referees in Wexford. You no, know what I mean? definitely, so. and it, it's great to see. We have um, Kieran Kelly, who was the fourth official here yesterday, who yeah. done it all with North End. Yeah, you Pat's in it, who was great footballer in his own yeah. day um, and now like and Garrett Garrett done it League of Ireland he done it with Ajax he done it yeah. with Sean McRovers yeah. and Garrett's final game with Rovers was actually down here in a cup final that's, that's against correct, Gory yeah. Rangers a couple of years ago um, so um, like look at he it's Garrett good, is yeah. knowledgeable um, and it's great to see yeah. see the likes of himself yeah. um, on the sideline we Give also have back. Sean Kenny as yeah. well who that's played it. for years with Rovers? Yeah. Um, there's, I suppose and, there's and not, probably not enough respect sure. go towards. I suppose these lads. Uh, so look, don't get me wrong. I know they're getting their few pounder for refereeing again, but they're giving up their Sunday mornings every Sunday. Do you know what I mean? And they could be after, especially said likes it likes of himself, who's after having a. 20, 30 years of a playing career and I suppose yeah. the wife and kids or whatever it is are probably so. looking forward to having him home every Sunday morning and then he turns around to referee so it's yeah, great to see him so. giving something back to the game. And it is fantastic and I know I know Gareth's wife Natalie I don't, I'd don't. i say she'd disagree with you Adam. She's glad he's gone out of a Sunday. <laughs> she was well, looking for another reason to get rid of him maybe. She probably signed him up for the referee's course <laughs> that's, Nicky that's Levy. exactly it. So. But look but it's, it's great to see and 
and I suppose it's, it's not an easy job to do as a referee. You get you get a plen- plenty of abuse out there of a Sunday no, morning. No, look, so. at, I was probably when I was managing Shamrock Rovers, I was uh, I'd say my name was mentioned more in the referees' room than anybody else's. But it's a job I'd never do. No, do you know, and uh, they do oh, they do a great job. Yep, sure and look at the yep. turn up every Sunday and. Um, Look, without then, him, we wouldn't have the extra football league, Nicky. That's why you have no. to look at it, don't you? That's it. That's exactly it. So, but look, it's an opportunity now for the All Blacks. Come out. Oh, oh, Brad was nearly in there. I was. It was the substitute, Brad Cool Cool after, and another young player coming into the game. He's going to be full of, full of energy and full of running. That's a beautiful turn down the right hand side by Shane Goff. Gets his head up, time to deliver the cross. Oh, great ball! Great cross in, oh. and there it is. Number ten, Adam Devericks. What a header! Yeah, fantastic header. Timed his run to perfection. So, Nicky. yeah, a fantastic header and a, a fantastic ball by Shane Goff, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was a super ball. He had so the time. It was the turn? Look at the turn. Great Nicky. turn. Gave him all the time. A delivery to the front post, and well. again for not the first time, a late the late arrival of the attacker, glance and header, and beats the keeper. And Beat. for the first time in the game, now the All Blacks are in the lead, and it's going to be up to Shelburne to see can they respond. And I'm just looking at the body language of the Shelburne lads. The heads are down. It's one thing the All Blacks lads didn't do. Yeah. The, straight away, they were looking to get the ball, get going. So, um, it's the first time All Blacks have took the lead. Well, that's what I mean. Now, it's a, every other time the All Blacks have bounced back. And we, we said in the, fir- in the first half or the first 90 minutes, oh. but an opportunity at the other end. And in fairness, there was number five, Gary Moore, came across and got rid of that. Gary just put it out in Rose Ed that time. He wasn't taking any chance. No. So, um, it'll look, be interesting. Ha- the half time were six minutes into the first half and we'll have ten minutes in the second half as well. So no need to panic just yet. But we did mention Shelburne maybe we're probably it can be a little bit demoralizing to your to your your mind, I think, sometimes. Yeah. You go into the lead of a game three times mentally, and they equalise. Yeah. Mentally, how, so how are they going to be able to mentally strong enough now to get back in? And we'll see. Because there will it. be chances. Well we will see. Um what'll be interesting to see now over the next six minutes, I suppose, will be um how all blacks control the game. Do yeah. they slow it down? Do the do you know, do the do, do they try and make it a little yeah. bit scrappy or, or do, do they just try and take the sting yeah. do they try and take the sting out of it? So um if they go try and kill it, they might leave themselves open, especially with the tree across the back. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Oh, everybody's getting a little bit hot at the minute and a little bit of confusion. I think All Blacks were looking to make a substitute there, but their player's not even stripped off and ready to go yet, so referee just gets on with it. It's an interesting time to make a sub when they were just at their scoring as well, you know, so. Yeah. There's Jamie There's O'Rourke. Oh! He's sl- he spilled it. Oh, but in fairness, in fairness to, I think it was, was it uh, Connor Breen was quickest to react when the keeper spilled that one and he got his team out of jail there, because if not, there could have been a tap in, but. Yeah. Just goes to prove Shelburne they're not going to roll over and die here, they're going to fight. De- definitely, and you'd expect it from them. Yeah. Do you know, um, they're, um, they're, they're, a good side. Said, they're a rural yeah. side, but um, the little villages around them there, yeah. Ratnor, yeah. Coast, Bally William, and all yeah. that like, little area. So, um, so, yeah, they'll be very proud. That was, a, in fairness, it was a good save by Owen Cummins there. And look, look, luckily enough, he had his d- <coughs> defenders backing him there as well to, to get him out of jail when he did spill it. Yeah, he did. He reacted quickest and he done very well. All Blacks will be looking to us, I suppose, as you said, try to take the sting out of the tail here now. And just, even if they have to go long for five minutes, Nicky, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's sometimes uh, ugly football, as they call it, can win you a cup final, can't it? Definitely. Well, they've played some lovely football, yeah. and so have in Shelburne, in fairness, yeah. but um, now it's just about playing control in football. Yeah, that's it. Um, to get back to what we're doing in the first ten minutes of the first half, where they were just getting the ball on the deck, knocking it from side yeah. to side for a while. But so as you said, Shelburne's tactical changes has really stopped them doing that in the second half of the game. Yeah, so they definitely did. So and Shelburne are, are all black, should I say? Are, are still they're trying they're trying to play football every time they can. Here's that man Darren knocked in again. What still an engine flying, Nicky. yeah. So he hasn't stopped for the whole game. No, he hasn't. In fairness, the Shelburne man does very well. I think he just keeps oh. it in, does you know? It just rolls out. But yeah, Darren Norton, what an engine! What yeah, a, just has not stopped so for the whole definitely. game. Definitely, he covered 60, 70 yards there, chasing that ball down into the corner. Yeah, and to be able to do uh, that, still going into extra time, you know, it's, just, yeah. it's, it's credit to them all. They're obviously been looking after each other, right? They've been training, right, and they're getting their just rewards at the moment, anyway. Yep, definitely. 
here he is, is again, Darren Norton, yeah, and just just smart enough just to let it roll across, and he'd be quite happy just to knock that off the Shelburne man, <coughs> another ball over the line, another yeah. couple of seconds wasted, and <coughs> as you say, controlling the game now, and the, the, the longer you pick up these little throw-ins, the more frustrated Shelburne will get, exactly, the more yeah. panicky they'll get, and they'll try and force the force something then that maybe they don't need to. Uh, and there, as you said again, just a, a little, little flick off the defender there from Shane Goff just to get a corner. It's another 30 seconds gone. It'll take, I'm sure there'll be a no rush whatsoever to Definitely take not. that. I, I did see there was a man for All Blacks stripped off down there. I think he sat back down, Nicky. Yeah, yeah. So there was someone stripped off and they were looking to make a change, but I think they're, they're happy enough for the minute and uh, maybe they'll wait till half time of extra time to make the change. Biding their time. So they are Goff to deliver it again. Great ball oh. in, but an absolutely powerful header. I think that was the number, Jamie, yeah. number eight. Jamie, Jamie O'Rourke, O'Rourke has done very well, and Darren Norton comes across, and it was just cut out there by the number ten, Barry Kelly, who's had a good game in the centre midfield for Shelburne. Yeah, he has. He has indeed. In fairness, I don't think there's any man on the pitch that hasn't had a good game. No, there's definitely not any man. They've all they've all done really well, haven't they? Yeah. So well now we're into injury time here at the. End of the first half of extra time, so yet again it'll be up to Darren Ennis. He has a look at his. I'm looking at him here. He looks at his watches as well. So uh. I don't think we'll have too much injury time at all, to be honest, because there haven't been really any stoppages in play apart from the goal. So no, and I think this is probably the longest somebody's been in the lead in the game, has it? Yeah, probably so is. Very yeah. close to yeah. it anyway. So well, they will have an opportunity for one oh. last attack. And oh, Shane Goff looked to, to pick out his striker Shane Cassidy there, and by the looks, we're going to have a little bit of a extra time, maybe a minute or that. An opportunity anyway, but Shelburne here looking to break, gets it out wide to that. And there it is, that is half time of extra time, so 10 minutes to go here in the second half of the Neil O'Sullivan Cup final. And it is, for the first time in the game, the All Blacks who have taken the lead, and lead 4-3. As we said, that goal coming from the head of number 10, Adam Debricks, and it was a lovely goal, Nicky. And really well worked. Um, Shane Goff done really well. Um... Let the ball roll and uh, roll the full back and then didn't panic, got his head up, yeah. swung the ball delivery. in across and yep. um, yeah, it was a, a really well finished. You can so even, even even just looking down there, both sets of teams, Nicky the Shelburne look a little bit dejected I suppose and look, the All Blacks are in, they're, they're high-fiving each other, they're keeping each other going yeah. but look, Shelburne have 10 minutes now to find an equaliser. 10 like minutes. In, in fairness, like... They're very easy in extra time when you go down in extra time to drop your head and they didn't they created chances there they won't they won't be giving up and we are going to see a substitute come in there it looks like it's going to be number 14 to come in for the all backs so this is Craig Carroll yeah this is where Shelburne are going to need their manager now he's really going to need to really give him a G up and um, and get among them and get them ready for this yeah, exactly. um, it's a critical 10 minutes for him now all backs are in a huddle and, and Shelburne have been just sent straight back out yeah By the looks of it, I think it's, it's number five, Gary Moore, who's going to come out for All Blacks there. I just see him going back in to, the, to sit down there. So, Gary Moore, as we said, coming out. Yeah, that'll be a big change. Uh, I know Ga- he looked tired. Um, it looks like um, Dot Moore has gone in centre half, but yeah. Gary Gary has been steady there. Yeah. The last thing you want to be changing is your back three at this stage of the game. But is, um, yeah. uh, Dot has had a very good game, hasn't he? Yeah, he's um, been, so he's been super he, there, yeah. He'll slot in and. Yeah. It looks like and Craig um, is just going to go into the left-hand side where he was. Yeah. So, so a big 10 minutes here. As we said, as it stands, it is All Blacks 4, 3, three, 10 minutes to go here in this Neil O'Sullivan Cup final. And, and Shordel, Bray, or sorry, Shelburne will have at least one opportunity here in the second half because they created opportunities after going down. And yeah, that's all it takes, isn't it? Nicky, just one chance to get back so into it. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, Nicky, we've come this far now. I'd love to see a, game, a set of penalties to finish it <laughs> off. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> It'd be a great spectacle so for us, maybe not for them. Yeah. Uh, look but I'm it. sure if you, were da- if you were to tell Shelburne now that they could take a penalty, they'd to take the hand off. Oh, they'd take it in a heartbeat, all right. Um, they'd, they'd definitely take it. I'm not sure all blacks would. No, but, no, no. Um, they just want to see out the, the next, ten mi- next nine, There's ten minutes. a good minutes, ball down so. the line here, an opportunity for Shelburne maybe to get the ball in the box, knocks it back. Back to that left full back. Whips it in. It does drop the fifth number fifteen there. They dropped him for a second Patrick ball on the edge of the box, but the, uh, the All Blacks lad done well just to get in around him and, and sort of hit him. that's an absolutely super touch by Cassidy just to kill that one out of the air and the way the All Blacks will look at now the more time to spend in that half of the pitch, they're they're in no danger of conceding and they'll be up to them just to sort of try hold tight now for ten minutes and they'll be the ones out there with their with their name on the trophy and 
Yeah, they, they, they surely will. And um, I suppose they're All Blacks, I suppose, on a high after coming away from winning the league last week, and be a, it'd be a great way for I suppose for the All Blacks club to finish off the season. And in fairness to them, they've put an absolutely fantastic effort out, out there. Like their club facilities out now, in the All Blacks are, are absolutely superb out there. The pitches are always at carpet. Trevor Rank can have them. Phenomenal yeah. in fairness and fair, fair juice to them. They're building a great club out there. Yeah, and I think this will be their first time winning. Yeah, Neil I think this, uh, if yeah, it is. Be both time. both teams, is it? Oh, oh, an opportunity so, at the back. Um, I don't think Shelburne have won it either. So be a new name on the trophy. Um, to be a new name on the trophy, yeah. either either way. But um, um, totally. yeah, All Blacks have been a bit of a strange club over the last few years. They were coming and then they went yeah. and came again, yeah. um, and they're on the upward turn again. And, yeah, it's and great. Look, it's great to see because they're is. a big club in Wexford. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, they're they're always happy. Yeah, yeah. So um, and they've always produced very good players. Yeah, it was a lot an opportunity that time for Brad Coolhoff at the end there and he just couldn't get the strike on it but in fairness All Blacks still playing soccer her long ball towards Cassidy all the time in the world he'll be in no rush whatsoever he has a man outside him but he's quite happy just to go towards the corner with it and wind down the clock yeah. he oh he's done really well hasn't he Devericks. he sent that one to the back post oh wasn't a million so miles away just a, a little bit of a lob towards the no. back post I think he was actually trying to pick out Mark Doyle who would peel off to the back post but the, the wind just sort of held it up there and it drifted and nearly worked more in his favour it did thankfully so. for, for Shelburne point of view it didn't it didn't go in and the keeper seemed comfortable enough with it going over his bar so Shelburne now looking to go along towards that man again Jamie O'Rourke but it's Darren Norton again in there doing doing the, the tough job in there and no, he was unlucky there the throw yeah. went against him but he's He's done really, really well. To be honest, I think if it, if it came down to it, Nicky, I think if someone told me I had to pick a man of the match, I think Darren Norton would be my man of the match. I, I suppose you see so many times in cup finals as the goal scorers who get man of the match, or maybe, but he's just done such a job in there for his team. He's just ah, done he all the hard work, the miles he's put in. I, I, if I was picking the man of the match, that's who my email would be funny to see who will get it. But Yeah, yeah, so I, I wouldn't disagree with you now at all on that one, Adam, um, to be honest. Um, but, okay. Thank f- thankfully it's not our it's job it's not our job Nicky no. so we can be wrong yeah <laughs> that's it yeah. No, we're never so wrong. it's a matter of opinion I guess Nicky ain't it? You, yes, like, you, could have, you could ask five different lads and they'll all have five different opinions too you know what I mean yeah. so I'm sure there's somebody at home saying it was a crap game <laughs> <laughs> yes I don't think there'll be too many lads Nicky can say no, this has been no, a bad no, game of no, football no, and fairness it's had ed- everything yeah well, and it could we oh, could have two one that can get their head up substitute through the legs oh referee Oh, big shout from the All Blacks for a penalty. No, Darren was, in fairness to Darren, he was very, very he close. He was on the spot. And so look, we, we have the benefits of being able to have a quick look at a, a replay of it and nobody else so will. Does really well, flicks it through his feet. And I think that would have been harsh if it was given. He did, there was contact, but I don't think it, there was any sort so of deliberate contact there, no, was there? I, no, no, no. So, look... If you were, if it was for you, you'd be screaming for it. If it was against you, you'd be giving out. You know, it, so it was one of them. It could have 50-50. If Darren had given a penalty, you'd have said there was contact. Said, yeah. If uh, he didn't, yeah. and look at it, what is it? It, um, it has to be intentional contact now, isn't it? So. Ball into the back oh. post. Oh, ball into the back post, and it was that man again, Shane Cassidy, arriving late. Keeper did come for it. I think it will be another corner kick. Uh-huh. Another corner kick, and... We're just yep. coming up to five minutes left here in the second half of extra time here. And at the moment, it's All Blacks creating all the chances. Yeah, so... See Bert Fortune coming down here with the trophy now as well. So he's getting ready to present. After the, after this game is over, we will have the presentation of medals and trophies. So stick around as we get back to the game. And a lovely flighted ball in towards Cassidy again. And... There's that number number five, Padre Glinch again. He's going to have a, a headache at the end of the game. The headers, he's willing sure. But Shelburne trying to get out now and create one last opportunity for themselves. And um, good ball out to the left hand side. In fairness to All Blacks back three, we were speaking. Oh, we were speaking about it in the first half. How um, how eager they were to leave two at the back, but yeah. they, they've kept They're that no, three. Yeah. The they were nearly touch tight that yeah. time um, for the and corner. And I noticed so. that time too. Um, Peter Goldsmith never even budged no. up for the corner. No, so look, they just kept it. They kept an it opportunity solid. Opportunity now down the left hand side. Don Mark Doyle is just keeping yeah. it. Yeah, he's but loses out. And sometimes you'd wonder, Nicky, what's the right thing to do there? You're cutting into a box. Does he keep going and try kill the game? Or the, like I think sometimes nearly. Like there's what is there? There's four minutes left. It's quite tough to hold the ball in the corner for four minutes, isn't yeah, it? You know what it I mean? And it is. It wonder it sometimes is. your team's better off sticking to it and if they can score. Like you play that ball across and you score the game's over. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you kill the game. So and 
That's true. But That's will very be another true. corner. And in fairness, the All Blacks have done very well to control this game, and especially this second half so far of extra time. So. Shelburne don't seem to have what they're looking for there to get that ball forward. No, they look, and as we spoke, uh, it's just the, the drained after leading three yep. times. Three times, um, yeah. Um, they've, um, but look, they've put on a great show, haven't they? There's two men going across to take this corner for the All Blacks. So you're probably going to see maybe just a little flick and hold in the corner, yeah. So, yeah, yeah no, rush what, keep no rush whatsoever, but yeah. Shelburne man come out in another couple of seconds off the clock and just looking down there, the, the Shelburne bun, the Shelburne managers scratching their head, probably wondering just what more did they have to do to win yeah. the game. But so. look, at, in fairness to Shelburne, they can't look at they will if they do lose this game, they will be dejected and they will be unhappy, but. In fairness, like it's been a very, very easy battle, and you couldn't really say that any team dominated the game. And at the moment, it's just the All Blacks who were after scoring. I suppose that that all important fourth one. And well, I, I, I couldn't separate them after the ninety, no. and um, I know, like as we said, it was just the goal that came. Yeah, yeah and, um, and it was a well and taken goal. Very goal, goal some so. lovely play. And but look, Shel Shelburne won't lie down just yet. No, nope. keep going. And but it's that man again, Peter Goldsmith, just sitting in front of that back three. Lovely oh, ball down the line. It. Does go at the defender this time, but kicks it out. Will be a goal yeah. kick. So, fairness to, to Peter, he's played at a high, higher level as well. Like he's played with the Rustler Rangers yeah. or Kilmore's yeah. in, in the Premier League, and he never looked out of place there no, either. Oh, no, he surely didn't. Um, I seen him a few years ago in a youth cup final, and he was actually yeah. he was excellent as well. So, um, he's a very, very good footballer. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it now nearly the All Blacks nearly playing with more of a, a back five now at the moment, just happy <laughs> yeah. enough to sit there and the two so. the two wingers have started to drop back into the gap and they're just gonna make it tough for Shelburne to try well, to create anything. That's the joy of the three at times you can do that. You yeah. can pull in your two wing backs and you can sit your centre midfielder and, and you can make it really, really compact um yeah. and look at that's what they're doing now and they're just leaving uh, Mark Doyle and Shane Cassidy kind of up top with, to to chase things down and Oh, and shout for it was, oh. I was just about to say, I think it was a handball off the arm of Peter Goldsmith, so Shelburne are going to have an opportunity here, Yeah, probably r roughly around the same place that Shane Cassidy scored that goal. We're not going to get another one, are we? Two minutes left to go in it, so they'll have to be putting these in the... Yeah, it looks like it'll be, it'll be Paddy Barron, number four, to take this one, and every single person is going forward, and... Um, it will be an opportunity now. All Blacks have everybody back, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see do the wall stand or jump or break. And the he does go for the strike, and it does hop, but great set of hands from the goalkeeper, Owen Cubbins, just hopped up. And I suppose so. he t takes that risk to let it hop. And yeah. the first half we had one hop over the bar nearly, Nicky. Yeah, this time yeah. the pitch has dried out now, in fairness, it was more of a dead, a dead bounce. And he was quite happy just to go to the ground with that one and take the yeah, sting out of it. And definitely, and this is the first time I've seen him kick the ball out. Yeah, he um, kicked he, long. And he just kicked long that time. So. In fairness to Shane Cassidy there, just got a little flick on, and that's all they need now at uh, this time of the no, day, No, that's it. And, uh, Shelburne are really going for it now. They've pushed everybody. Barbary Kelly back now. Yeah, we are so into the last minute of out of time here as well, Nicky. So. All centre-halves are up, and... Oh, it's just in. Oh! oh. Was that number five, Paul Riglinch at the other end this time? So, and they still have it. on. Oh, what a ball. Oh, oh. a great ball so. in there by Owen Kelly, and they just couldn't manage to get the finish on it, but I think that could have been the chance, Nicky. Yeah, it looked like it was the chance. Um, Paul Riglinch got it through the keeper's legs, and I think, I don't know if it was going just sh just wide, or, but it was... The full back was very, very aware and cleared at the sub. Yeah, I think it might have just, just drifted yeah. drift wide, but um, was was one of them ones. You just needed a little bit better contact on yeah. it. He probably had his no. goal, and and in fairness to Craig, he read it or Brad, should I say? He yeah, cool half he read, he cleared it. So, oh, it will be a throw, a throw to Shelburne. No. We're into injury time here at the, oh. of, at the end of extra time, so more than likely last could chance be, to All Blacks could be giving out another throw gone against them that they're yeah. fighting for if they score here. They're long be, throw. This, oh, very long throw. Flick on and it uh, goes harmlessly all the way through to Owen Cummins and he'll take all the time in the world here. Yeah. And in fairness, I don't think we've had a stop. I yeah. see Darren Ennis going in to tell him to get on with the game. He does go long. Long ball down towards the striker. Substitute number 13 there it was, Quigley who came across and is there going to be time for one more attack for Shelburne? There looks like there is, 
But again, that man who's been solid at the back gets it clear in that more. And Darren Norton in there now trying to tidy up. Hooks it yeah. clear down his line. Darren Ennis hasn't went for the whistle just yet, so maybe it's an opportunity here for Shelburne just for one more attack at the end of this Neil O'Sullivan Cup yeah, final. Yeah, you can feel the tension here off the All Blacks yeah. dug out there. Yeah. They're, they're, they're all out there waiting. Yeah, and I suppose the, the opposite side, Shelburne are the same. Yeah, they're hoping they're for another 30 seconds, but when All Blacks are waiting and Shelburne are hoping. That's you it, know, isn't it? So, yeah. um, see, so. Parig Lynch going across for this long throw again. So probably this is, I'd imagine, Nicky, the last play yeah. of the game. You would think so. You would Big think throw. so. Uh. And there it is, the full-time whistle here in Furry Carrick Park. And it is the All Blacks FC, where the 2022 Neil O'Sullivan Cup final winners on a scoreline of 4-3 against Shelburne after extra time. Nicky, a cracking game of football, there's not much more you can say. No, let's just hope the, the Wexford Cup final is as good. Yeah. Um, but a fantastic, um, a fantastic display by both teams. Commiserations to, to the Shelburne lads, they're, they're better out on their feet there, yeah. they're... They're absolutely devastated. Um, yeah. Look, at, especially as you said, up three times in the game. But look, you have to give a big, big, big shout out to All Blacks. Dug in every time, and look, they've, they've got their winner. But look, Nicky, as we said, we'll, we'll stick around here now for the tro trophy presentation and the medals and the man of the match. And we'll be back live here in the afternoon for the Wexford Cup final as well between North End and Gordy. And we'll talk to you then. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Nicky.
Eggs. All, all blacks come around here, will you? Well, let's want to say a few words before. On behalf of the Wicker Football League and the uh, O'Sullivan family in Scarty, we'd like to congratulate all blacks on winning the, the, the cup. Shelburne put up a great fight, which is, and I wish that next year the two of the teams had the best of luck. Now, I'd like to call on the, the referees first. Yeah, a good job they done. Referee. Darren Ellis. <laughs> Second linesman, Gareth Larkin. <laughs> That's enough now. That's it, I'm finished. <laughs> And hello, Mr. Kelly. Hello. Now, I want the Captain of Shelburne here, please. Captain of Shelburne. You call out your name now. Call out your names. Thank you. Uh, Brian Lynch. Uh, Jamie O'Rourke. Uh, Dara Bulger. Paddy Boland. Uh, Shane Delaney. Uh, Kevin Collins. Uh, Owen Kelly. Uh, Sean O'Connor. Uh, Sean Morn. Uh, Paddy Barron. Uh, Luke O'Connor. Uh, Paddy Lynch. Uh, uh, Jess Quigley. Uh, Barry Kelly. Uh, Craig Delaney. Uh, Connor Ling. Uh, oh, yeah, it's David O'Leary. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Paddy Murphy. <laughs> now, lads, I'd like to, the captain of All Blacks, please. Uh, Owen Cummins. Speaking of it, <laughs> that more. Iron Goff. Kyle Rankin.
Bradley Kulov. Mark Doyle. Craig Carroll. Adam Debricks. Shane Cassidy. <laughs> Darren Norton. Connor Breen. <laughs> Peter Goldsmith. <laughs> Uh, John McGuire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Niall Moore. Doug Moore. Greg Troy. Shane Maiden. Uh, Last but not least, Paul Murphy. <laughs> yeah, one. And the other one, come on. Guy Moore. Are you the one? Thanks, guy. Man of the match. Shane Cassidy. <laughs> A few words, and it's going to be very few. <laughs> uh, just look, there has to be a first place and a runner up every year in the cup final. And unfortunately, Shelburne, it wasn't your day, but that was I'm not going to curse, that was some game of football, lads. I went all the way, so unlucky and best luck in your promotion playoff, right? Uh, said it last week, it this is some squad, make. Dodo and Goalie said this is a three year plan and all this and they said we're going to win stuff and lo and behold two weeks later we have two trophies so I'm going to keep it short and sweet and I'm going to say on the fucking backs! <laughs> Thank you. 